West. Calling Chief Inspector West. Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Morris Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part one, Honeymoon Spells Nightmare. Belgravia 437... Yes, Mr. Michael Grant's apartment. Uh, What name shall I say? I'm sorry, sir, but unless I have your name, I'm afraid I... Is that for me, Hayden? Yes, sir, but the gentleman won't give his name. Oh, won't he? Give me the phone. Hello? Grant speaking. Who's that? No, I do not. And I have a constitutional aversion to people who play funny beggars on the telephone, sir. Good grief... Hayden, that'll be all for the moment. Shut the door as you go out. Very good, sir. What? Yes, I'm still here. I didn't think you'd have the gall to come back to England, let alone phone me. Your congratulations? On what? Yes, I am. Yes, the wedding's the day after tomorrow. Now, if that's all you... What? Her father, you slimy little... Now, get this straight. I know all about her father, and it doesn't matter a damn to her or to me, understand? So if you so much as try any of your rotten... Yes, by the powers, I'm warning you. History won't repeat itself. Next time, I'll come with a gun. That's a promise. The swine. The vicious swine. Roger! Breakfast! Oh, the kettle. Roger! Going. This minute, please, I'm dishing up. Oh, Roger! Oh, right, sit oh. down. Mmm. <laughs> oh, smells good. Sit you down. Yes, ma'am. Where are the boys? Hey, Scoopy, Fizz. No, they've already had breakfast. I let you sleep on a bit after the time you got home last night. Your sons are up in the playroom with that train set you gave them last Christmas. You may be Scotland Yard's youngest, smartest chief inspector, but that... If I may say so, Mr. West, was not one of your brighter notions. Mm. We all make mistakes. I route the boys out, Jan. They'll be late. <laughs> not if they can spin things out long enough so that Dad has to give them a lift in the car. Oh, cunning young demons. Marvellous, isn't it? Eleven and ten, and as crafty as they make them already. Well, heredity, well out. After all, they've a copper for their father. Ready for tea? Any time you like. Here you are. I- I've sugared it for you. No, oh, thanks. I wish you didn't have to work so hard. Well, it's no worse for me than any other copper. The motto of the force these days, overworked and understaffed, but we go marching on. Yes, but even so, you've no need to drive yourself quite so much, darling. If what you're after is to finish up being the Yard's youngest assistant commissioner as well, there's still lots of time, surely. Sir Guy Chatworth can stay put in his office for a while yet, can't he? (laughs) As long as he likes. Oh, no, that's no job for me, Jan. I'm not cut out to be a desk-bound policeman. Any more tea in the pot? Mm, Yes, of course. Yes, well, all the same. It wouldn't hurt you to take an hour off once in a while. Today, at lunchtime, for instance. It just so happens that I'm going to be in the West End. There's an exhibition of American paintings at the Markham Galleries. And I think it would be nice if you took me out for lunch. Roger. Hmm? I don't believe you're even listening. That's a date. What? For lunch. Oh. <laughs> well, talk about a girl having the wind taken out of her sails. Here was I all set for a battle. Meet me outside St. Catherine's Church, 12 o'clock. After that, we'll go on to lunch. Lovely. What on earth will you be doing outside St. Catherine's? Don't tell me the vicar's had his fingers in the poor box. <laughs> oh, nothing poor about the parishioners in that district, my dear girl. Now, I'll be there because, um... Well, I'd uh, like to take a look at a wedding. You? Look at a wedding? What's come over you? It was as much as you could do to be in time for your own. <laughs> well, it's a far cry from the marriage of an impecunious, newly appointed detective constable to the knot that's being tied at noon today for Michael Grant, Esquire, no less. Michael Grant? Mm. Son of the millionaire. Sir Mortimer Grant. That's right. The big business bigwig. Oh. 
The chairman of half a dozen huge companies on the board of a dozen others. Yes, of course. His name's always in the papers. And young Grant hits the headlines nearly as often as his father in the same line of country. All off his own bat. They say he's well on the way to his own first million. And with no help from Dad. Oh, really? And who's the lucky girl? Her name's Christine Morley. Very pretty by all accounts. About ten years younger than he is. And just why precisely are you so interested in this wedding? Oh, call it, um... Idle curiosity. <laughs> and just what is that intended to mean, may I ask? I've been married to you for 12 years, Chief Inspector West, and the day you do a thing like this out of purely idle curiosity... What's the time? Good Lord, half past eight. I'll have to be off. And if those monsters of ours want to live to the school, well, they'd better hurry. A uh, Scoopy, fish. A uh, Jan, love, in front of St. Catherine's at 12. Right. Martin, Richard, come on, you two. Downstairs and at the double. Mind you pushing, if you please. Oh, sorry, I'm looking for someone. Oh, listen, they're coming. Uh, Jan, over here, Jan. Excuse me. Do you mind if I get through? Oh, Roger, I'm sorry. I'm not too late, am I? No, no, all's well. Oh, there they are. Oh, no, there they are. Oh, oh Roger. She's a lot more than pretty. She's beautiful, a perfectly lovely bride. Right. And no wonder she looks radiant. He's a very handsome man. Roger, you're not looking. What on earth are you staring at? By the door of the church, Jan. Just behind all the photographers. The chap in the shabby grey suit. Uh, with the hat down over his eyes? I wondered if he'd show up here. Why? Who is he? Arthur Morley, father of the bride. Her father? Oh, look! There they go into the car. And he's gone, too. Disappeared in the crowd. Yes, but Roger, look, what on I'll, earth I'll tell you he... over lunch. Come on. It was, oh yes, well over 13 years ago. I was still a new boy at the yard, but I remember it. And this should interest you. Arthur Morley was a painter of sorts, portraits mostly. Yes, but Roger, why was he skulking outside the church? Her own father, why wasn't he? Giving the bride away. Yes. Mm, good reason, Jan. He's just out of prison a little over a month ago. Oh. Have another glass of wine. It's not bad, is it? What was he in for? For murder. Murder? He was sentenced to death for strangling his wife. Roger. Oh, careful. He nearly knocked that glass over. His own wife? Yes. Why did he do it? Mm, there was a quarrel over another man. The trial was a short one. The prosecution proved Morley was unreasonably jealous and with no justification. But he got a reprieve. They commuted the sentence. And now he's out. Thirteen years. When it happened, the girl must have been just a child. Mm, about ten. Same age as Scoopy. What became of her? As I remember, she went to some distant relatives. And judging by the look of her today, I'd say there are no lifelong scars there or anything of that sort. Wouldn't you, Jan? Well, she certainly looked happy enough. I hope she is. Really happy. If anyone deserves it, she does. After all that. Michael? Yes, darling? Let's not bother with the car radio, shall we? Anything you say, Mrs. Grant? Mm. Mrs. Grant. Mrs. Michael Grant. Mm. Darling, are you planning to drive all the way to Devon non-stop? Of course not. Then where are we staying the night? You'll find out. Tell me. Wait and see, Chris. No, I won't wait. Chris! Oh, I hate unexpected things. Surprises and all that sort of nonsense. I got over that once and for all. And I was still a child. Sweetheart, I'm sorry. I, I should have remembered. Then tell me where we're making for. Into the wilds of darkest Dorset. I've chosen the place specially. I came across it years ago, and I've always meant to go back. It's called Uplands, a country hotel, but it's more like a club. Tennis court, swimming pool, the lot, and, and all miles from anywhere. Mm, it sounds lovely. Hey, Michael, watch out! That damn fool! What does he think he's... He can't pass on this bend. It's... My God! Oh, Michael, be careful! It's all right, Chris. Oh, you just missed the hedge by inches. Sorry. Oh. Michael, did you notice the man in the back? Yes, I saw him. He turned and looked at us. He was smiling. But such a strange smile. Well, I know it sounds silly, but it was quite frightening. Or perhaps it was the dog sitting beside him. Did you see it? No. Michael, it was the biggest Alsatian I've ever laid eyes on. <laughs> 
What are you doing? We're taking a shortcut. Oh, you might warn me next time you decide to make a sharp turn like that. Sorry, sweetheart. I, I just thought it'd be a nicer run through the lanes, and it'll save some mileage. Besides, uh, I could do with a drink. So the sooner we reach our destination, the better. The Chief Inspector West. Well, well, it's been quite some time, Pearlie. Huh? Oh, come off it, old lad. I couldn't mistake that whiskey-fied old voice of yours if I was half deaf. There's something I can do for you. Oh, the other way around, eh? Right, I'm listening. Pearlie, is that straight up? 22 carat? Yes, of course I believe you. So he's back in England, is he? You're right, Pearlie, I am interested in anything and everything about that gentleman. What's that? Young Grant. Oh, I shouldn't think so. After what happened before, I don't see Mr. Grant coming to us for protection or anything else. Oh, keep your ears flapping, Pearly, and see what else they pick up. Huh? Good man. Bye now. West here. I'd like to see the assistant commissioner as soon as possible. When will he be free? All right. Yes, I'll be in my office for the rest of the day. Well, Mrs. Michael Grant, this is it. The bridal chamber. Every modern comfort, as madam can see. Now, that's the bathroom, the door in the corner. It's a shared bathroom, actually. It connects through to the room next to this. But just to ensure our privacy, I've taken both rooms. Mm, no expense spared. I knew what I was about, didn't I? Marrying a big businessman. Oh, what time do they start serving dinner here? Oh, uh, seven o'clock onwards. Oh, marvellous. Lots of time for me to unpack. We... Oui shall unpack. I insist on sharing all the chores. I'll open the bags and you can hang up the things. <laughs> you call that sharing? Well, let's see how much room there is in this wardrobe. <gasps> Chris, darling, what in the world? The face, look in there, the face. What? A... Oh, Chris, it's just a party mask on a hanger. But it's his face. Don't you see that man in the car with the dog? Even the smile, the same smile. By thunder. <laughs> a painted mask. Painted specially. And a damn professional job. Oh, Michael, what does it mean? What does it mean? The swine. You know what it means. You must know. I've never seen that face in my life till today. Sweetheart, you're, you're shaking. Come and sit down. Oh, Michael, answer me. You know that man, don't you? Yes, Chris. I know him. Who is he? His name is Corrosian. Yes, sir. Corrosion. Back in England? Sure, Roger. According to Pearlie Willis, when it comes to that sort of information, I've yet to have Pearlie let me down. Shut that damn window, will you? Yes, sir. There are times behind this desk, Roger, when I feel like tossing the job of assistant commissioner straight back into the Home Secretary's lap. This is one of them. I want him, sir. I want to get Corrosion. Sit down and relax, Roger. No, I'm not in a relaxing mood, sir. For years, he's had his hands in every kind of vice and crime. Nothing has been too low or too dirty for him to get mixed up in. We've always known it, and we've never been able to do a thing about it. Not for one of trying, you know. Oh, of course we've tried. And what good's it been? We've set traps enough time and again, and he's slipped through them all, every one of them. What's brought him back to England? The grant business, you think? Could be. But I doubt if that's the only reason. Well, why not? If it hadn't been for young Grant, Corrosion wouldn't have cleared out of the country at all. Admittedly. But look at the facts, sir. Corrosion was blackmailing Sir Mortimer Grant. We don't know why and probably never will now. The old boy wouldn't come to the police, but he told his son. So young Grant goes off on his own, breaks into Corrosion's Mayfair apartment, leaves the place looking as if a tornado had hit it, and gets away with whatever it was Corrosion had on his father. Yes, and some other incriminating stuff along with it, obviously. Hence Corrosion's hasty departure. He was scared young Grant might give us the evidence to send him up for a nice long stretch. But Grant didn't give it to us, did he? And now Corrosion comes back. And not just to get Grant. There has to be more to it than that, sir. Look, we know Corrosion's kept on operating here by remote control, as it were. Why bother to come back at all unless there's more behind it? A lot more, if you ask me. Such as what, for instance? Oh, I wish I knew. I wish there was even an inkling. What I'd like at this stage is a chat with Mr. Michael Grant. But since he's on his honeymoon... We'll just have to wait. Waiting isn't always a bad thing, Roger. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Paul, Epistle to the Hebrews, if I remember correctly. 
And that's about it, Chris. I burned everything I found in Corosian's flat, including the stuff he was using to blackmail my father. But of course, Corosian doesn't know I burned it. We've been left quite a legacy, haven't we? By our fathers. Darling. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind talking about it. Whatever your father did, he could hardly have a worse past than mine. You've just told me Corosian tried to blackmail you about it before our wedding. I shouldn't have told you oh, that. Oh, don't be silly. Darling, if we're going to have secrets from each other, what's the point of it all? Well, there's no point in staying here any longer, that's quite certain. These bags can go back in the car and so do we. We're getting out, Chris. Now. Michael. I brought you here to Uplands because after that phone call, I was absolutely certain Corosian wouldn't know about this place. Well, he's proved me wrong, hasn't he? So we run away. Michael, that's no way for us to begin by running. I won't let you do it, darling. Chris. Come here. Closer. Darling, nothing's going to spoil this honeymoon. I promise you that. And that was just a sample. Now, you finish your drink. And then while I get into one of my brand new dresses for dinner, you can take a stroll in the grounds and check up on what this uplands of yours has to offer. I beg your pardon. What the devil? You... Oh, no, not the devil, my dear sir. Hardly in such tranquil surroundings. I must apologize if I startled you. I only meant to trouble you for a light, if that were possible. Oh, uh, certainly. Thank you. A charming spot, Uplands, don't you agree? I certainly do, though I've only just arrived here. Really? Mm -hmm. But so have I, Mr... Uh, uh, Michael Grant. My name is Prendergast. Yes, Mr. Grant, this place is a positive haven. Rural beauty and serenity. Where one can escape completely from the strife and the turmoil of the outside world. Leaving behind the vortex of violence. You know, I never really feel safe these days. Do you? Oh, yes, quite often. Then you're a very fortunate man, Mr. Grant. Personally, I find the present state of the world creates an atmosphere of never-ending anxiety and concern. Even danger. Personal danger. Aren't you exaggerating, Mr. Prendergast? Am I? Perhaps. Perhaps. It may have become something of an obsession with me. I see violence and danger everywhere one turns. Mm. It may, of course, have something to do with one's occupation. In my case, the placid nature of my work seems only to highlight the violence and insecurity all around one. And what is your work? Oh, I'm an artist, Mr. Grant. I paint. Do you not? Usually portraits. But I'm hoping to try my hand at some landscapes while I'm here. Well, I must be getting back. Thank you for a most delightful chat, Mr. Grant. A most agreeable encounter. I'll say au revoir. Goodbye, Mr. Prendergast. So you paint, do you? And usually portraits. More wine, Chris? Not another drop. And that was a wonderful dinner. Michael, what's next on the program? Well, there'll be dancing if you feel like it. Or we might take a short stroll in the moonlight. Mm, that sounds perfect. And it's a beautiful evening by the look of it. Right. Then we'll finish our coffee and... <laughs> I say, I wonder if that young couple at the next table have the same idea. See? They're just leaving, hand in hand. Mm, I was right. It's a lovely evening. I was right, too, about that couple. There they go. Along the path through the shrubbery. Mm, that looks like an interesting walk. Suppose we follow their example. <laughs> but of course, we'll keep it a nice, discreet distance. Where on earth does this path lead, darling? Oh, it twists and winds so much. It comes out overlooking a meadow. And beyond that, there's an orchard. The moon's so bright, you'll be able to see. I should think we're being discreet enough, wouldn't you say? Couldn't possibly be more so. 
Not a sign of the other couple. Oh, Lord. Oh, Michael. Oh. It came from up ahead there. Come on, Chris. Oh, Michael, that was a girl screaming. Hurry, Chris. Here, grab my hand. Michael, there she is, under that bush. Fainted, I think. She is still breathing. But where's the man? I can't... Oh, Michael. Oh, my God. Oh, he's through the blood. Don't look, Chris. Turn oh, away. Oh, Michael. He's dead. He's been savaged. Like... Like a sheep by a wild... Oh, look, look. Down there at the edge of the orchard. You see? A man. And beside him, Michael. By his side. A dog. An Alsatian dog. But, Michael, darling, you must tell the police what we believe. Oh, you should have told them last night as soon as they arrived. But at least they're still here in the hotel. Oh, look, go down now, darling, and tell... No, the devil's there. Come in. Uh, Mr. Grant. Well? My name's West, Roger West. Chief Inspector Scotland Yard. May I have a word with you? Oh, all right, uh, come in. Thank you. I didn't know anyone from the yard was here. I arrived about an hour ago. The Dorset police asked for our help. I'd like to ask for yours. Won't you sit down, Inspector? Oh, uh, this is my wife. Yes, of course. We were outside St. Catherine's yesterday. My wife and I both thought you looked wonderful. Oh, thank you. I suppose you're here because of the... What happened last night? Yes. I've talked with the local inspector. I've got the whole picture, including a report about a car which was seen on the road not far from Uplands at about nine o'clock last night. A chauffeur-driven car with a passenger... And an Alsatian dog. The theory seems to be that the dog was a man-killer and broke away from his master. So, an accident. Tragic, but an accident. But you doubt that theory. Or am I mistaken? No. You're not mistaken, Mr. Grant. I'm not altogether satisfied that in this instance, accident is the right word. What's your opinion? I think you're right. Then you'd say the dog was set onto that poor lad. In other words, Mr. Grant, murder. And I think it happened to the wrong man, Inspector. I believe it was an attempt to murder me. Thank you. That's what I'd hoped you'd say. I was afraid you wouldn't. And to be honest, I had no idea as to how I could possibly drag it out of you. You knew? Let's say I had a shrewd notion, Mrs. Grant. That amounts to the same thing in my job. Now, Mr. Grant, how long have you known that Corrosion was back in England? So, there you are. That's it, the whole story, Chief Inspector. Now you know as much as Chris and I do. I've told you everything. Mr. Grant, you've been frank with me. I'll pay you the compliment of returning that frankness. We can't touch Corrosion for what he's done in the past... And we've no idea what he's really up to at the moment. But he's not back in this country purely for revenge. He's not such a fool. However, because he's obviously out for revenge as well, it could be our chance to nail him with your help. What exactly are you driving at? We couldn't find a more perfect place to lay a trap than this hotel. It's isolated miles from anywhere. We can check on anyone coming and going without any trouble at all. And there's a definite draw here for corrosion. Isn't there, Mr. Grant? You want me to... West, for God's sake, we're on our honeymoon. I haven't forgotten that. But we'll never get a better chance. I want to get him, Grant. I want him badly. If you're willing to help. Michael. Chris, you're not to worry. It's out of the question. We're getting in the car and we'll head for Devon. Or straight to the Riviera, if you like. No, darling. Don't you remember what I told you last night about running away? Of course we must stay. Mustn't we, Inspector? There's no question of compulsion, Mrs. Grant. It can only be your decision. We'll stay. Thank you. And I'd like you to know that I admire you both. Very much indeed. I want a damn sight more from you than admiration, West. I want Chris protected every minute of the day. Understand that? Every single minute. You'll both be protected, Mr. Grant. Leave that to me. I'll make all the arrangements that are necessary. Not sorry to have the pool to ourselves. Are you, darling? Not a bit. And the water's marvellous. The swim is just what we needed. Oh, feels a bit odd to have it under police supervision, though. They're keeping at a suitably respectful distance. 
And apart from me, they're your only audience for the new bikini. Oh, I think I've had about enough, though, Michael. What I'd like now is a good hot bath and a nice cup of strong tea. Right. Tell you what, I'll race you the length of the pool and we'll pack it in. Only if you give me a start. I'll do even better. You can take a racing dive off the edge of the pool and I won't start till you've got halfway. Go on. Out you get. Okay. All set. Off you go. Chris! Chris! What's wrong? Thank God. Over here, quickly. Chris, someone took a shot at you. A shot? Just as you dived. For a minute, I thought... Come on. I have a few well-chosen words to say to Mr. Chief Inspector West. You call that protection, West? Chris might have been lying at the bottom of that pool with a bullet in her. The important thing is that she's not, Mr. Grant. She's taking a bath, safe and sound, behind that door. No thanks to you or those idiots of yours. By the time they went racing off over to the shrubbery, Chris could have been shot ten times over. West, when I agreed to play decoy for Corrosion for you, I wasn't banking on anything like this. When it comes to Chris, nothing doing. The deal's off, West. Chris, come on out, darling. Now, Grant, calm down. I realize how you feel about Do this. Do you? Suppose it was your wife. Chris, out of that bathroom. We're leaving here right away. Chris, you're here? Answer me, Chris. Open the door. Chris, are you all right? Grant, that bathroom connects with the room next door, doesn't it? Come on. Down the corridor. You've got the key to this other room? Of course. Right, use it. It's not locked. But West, I locked it myself. Now, this other door to the bathroom. Hurry, man. It's not locked either. Chris, do West. The room's empty. She's gone. You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the first part of Battle for Inspector West by John Creasy. Listen to Terror for a Bride, the next episode of John Fawcett Wilson's production of Battle for Inspector West. Stand by for West. A Crime File, based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard and Sarah Lawson as his wife Janet. Part two, Terror for a Bride. You've got the key to this other room. Of course. Right, then use it. It's not locked. But West, I locked it myself. Now, this other door to the bathroom. Well, hurry, man. It's not locked either. Chris, darling, West. The room's empty. She's gone. But... Out of the way. The bath water's still hot. But, West, you and I were in the next room. Come on. Grant, you stay here, but don't touch a thing. I'll send up one of the Dorset police to take over from you. How is it possible? How could anyone... Not just anyone. We're up against Corrosion. Corrosion. He's got her. He's got Chris. For all your promises of safety and protection, West, if she's dead... Grant, if she's been murdered like that poor young devil last night, savaged by an Alsatian dog... Christine's not dead, Grant. How the hell can you know? Well, think, man. If Corrosion had wanted your wife killed, we'd have found her in that bathroom. He's had her kidnapped to get back at you. But she's alive, Grant. Your wife's alive. Hang on to that. Come on, go. Let's hear something out of you. Just something. Oh, blimey. Denny, pull up. Stop. Stop this flipping van, do you hear me? What's the matter? Pull up and get round here. In the back here and sharpish. Oh, Lord. Come on, girl. Open your eyes. Or make a sound. Just a sound. 
What's the idea? You know the drill. No stop till we get to the old quarry. The other car's waiting. Yeah, let them bleed in wait. Denny, we're in bother. Dad bother. She don't come to. What? I can't bring her round, Denny. You stupid great. What the hell did you do to her back in that bathroom? <laughs> Nothing. I just shoved the towel over her head till she passed out and then... If you shoved too tight, Cocker, if you creased her... Don't say that. If she snuffed it, you'll be saying something. Your prayers, mate. And some for me and all. You know the orders and you know the gaffer. Oh, for God's sake, belt up. Belt up about him. When I get nightmares, Cocker, that's what they're made of. Mr. Corrosian, just looking at me with that smile of his. Oh. We've got to bring her around or you and me are meat for the worms as well. So let's get working and pull that door shut. We don't want nobody getting too nosy. What? Uh, yes, Inspector. Well, that's got to be the answer. Wes. It's the only possible answer, the van. Wes. Uh, when I'm through on the phone, Mr. Grant, come in if you like, but shut the door. Uh, sorry, Inspector. Well, you know what's wanted. Get calls out to all police patrols. To be on the lookout for a small delivery van, colored green, lettering in white on both sides, jellabies, fruiters, and florists. That's right. And don't waste a minute, Inspector. Now, Mr. Grant. What's all this about a delivery van? That's how your wife was smuggled out of Uplands. In a florist van? It makes regular trips up here from their shop in town with flowers for the hotel. It was obviously hijacked this trip and taken over by Corrosion's men. It looks like he had another man planted inside the hotel. So the van got in and out of Uplands with no trouble at all. And you said this place would be so easy to guard, so remote and isolated. If that's what you call efficient police work. Now, just a minute. Don't bother giving me explanations or excuses. This whole thing was your idea using our honeymoon to set a trap for Corrosion. Chris was to be protected every single minute of the day, and now she's disappeared. Right from under your nose. Grant. Well, you find her, you hear me? Find Christine. Or you'll find yourself out of your Scotland Yard office block and back to pounding a beat, Chief Inspector. I'll have your hide if it takes every penny I own and every ounce of influence I've got. <sighs> Denny, it's no use. You're never going to do it. The kiss of life don't work. Cocker, if it don't, it'll be the kiss of death for you and me, mate. I say we ought to scarp her. Ditch her and the van right here and get out of it. You've got to be joking. You ever hear of anyone getting away from Corrosion? Here goes again. <laughs> Denny, she's moving. You done it. You done it. <laughs> and you can thank your lucky stars I have. Uh, she's opening her eyes. Oh, what a... <gasps> no, you don't know. No noise. <laughs> Now, I'll take my hand away if you promise to keep nice and quiet. Let's have a nod to show you'll be a good girl. <laughs> right, then. Oh, what? What are you going to do with me? And no call to get excited now. I know you. You're one of the waiters in the hotel. Quiet, I said. Got the eye for Dermot Cocker? Yeah, right here. No, please don't. Just a shot to put you to sleep, you boys, that's all. And then, Cocker, we get moving. Down to the old quarry, as per orders. Scotland Yard. Uh, West here. Put me through to the AC. I beg your pardon, sir. This is Chief Inspector West calling. I want the Assistant Commissioner, Sir Guy Chatworth. Yes, sir. One moment. <sighs> Chatworth? Uh, West here, sir. Well, anything new to report, Roger? Uh, nothing very good, I'm afraid, sir. Uh, very well. You may consider you've prepared me for the worst. Let's have it. Corrosion's got clear away with Christine Grodd. Ah, no trace of that delivery van. Uh, yes, the van was found abandoned at a disused quarry. They switched to another vehicle. The, the real driver was found there, too, quite all right, apart from a bit of shock. Did you get any description of the men who hijacked his van? Oh, he hardly saw them. Ah. Corrosion's done it. He sprung my trap right back in my face. How's young Grant taking it? Well, his bride's disappearance. Snatched the day after their wedding, the first day of their honeymoon. It's hit Grant pretty hard, you'd say. He's going through hell. That's what I'd say. Well, I take it you'll want a general alarm out for Christine Grant. Uh, yes, sir. I'd also like a net out for any Corrosion man, anyone ever known to have worked for him or, or had any connection with him. We might pick up a lead that way. Lord knows I could use one. Nothing your end? Only one, sir. That's blown up in my face, too. A man named Prendergast, uh, a guest here at Uplands. Seems he dropped some veiled hints to young Grant last night. Now there's no sign of him. He's vanished. Over that uh, keep at it, you chaps. I want every inch of the shrubbery gone over, understand? Right, you are, Inspector. West, what's all this? Oh, it's you, Grant. 
Uh, Sergeant, keep your men well spread out. I spotted you from my window. What goes on? Oh, self-evident, isn't it? I thought you'd already searched the hotel grounds. We're searching them again. For what? What do you hope to find? If we find it, I'll tell you. Wait a minute. Uh, I didn't realize at first everything looked so different in the daylight, but... Well, surely this is where we... Where you and your wife found that young fellow last night, yes. And spotted the Alsatian going toward the orchard. Inspector? Hmm? Over here. All right with you, Sergeant. Well, come on, Grant, since you're here. Oh, well, Sergeant. Uh, look at this, sir. A knife. A kitchen carving knife. Yeah. You see what's on the blade? Blood. It's not rust. Uh, you found this here, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Mm. What's that under those bushes? Uh, looks like a... Like a shoe, sir. Now, come on. Right, drag him out, Sergeant. Right, let's have a look at him. Turn him over. Good Lord. Is this the man who talked to you last night, Grand? Yes. Yes, that's Prendergast. Look at his chest. Mm. He told you he was an artist, didn't he? It seems he met another. A knife artist. One on Mr. Corrosian's payroll, by the looks of it. Then you think I was right? That Prendergast painted the mask, Corrosian's face, and scared Chris half out of her wits? Yes, I think you were right. But why should he be murdered? Oh, outlived his usefulness, possibly, or... Or perhaps he got scared, threatened to come to the police with whatever he knew. Have you any idea who's done this? An hour ago, I learned that Prendergast was seen talking to one of the waiters late last night, a, a new man... He's only been at Uplands for the past week. He was on duty this morning, but hasn't been seen since your wife disappeared. I'll be putting out an alarm for him. Just like you've done for Chris when it's too late? Is that why you're a chief inspector so early in your career? Because you're so good at shutting stable doors. All right, Grant, that'll do. Like hell it will. I've already told you once, and I meant it. Every word. You get Chris back to me, unharmed, untouched, or I'll break you. Grant. I've been making allowances for you, but I've just about had enough of it. Instead of throwing your weight around, I suggest you think back a little. And you might consider putting at least part of the blame where it belongs, at your own door. Are you crazy? No, I don't think so. You once had the chance to bring Corrosian to justice and you deliberately let him off the hook. Has it ever occurred to you how many people would suffer because of it? Look, all I wanted... I know what you wanted. You raided his flat, you found records of some of his crimes, but you didn't bring them to us. You destroyed the evidence because it contained what he was using to blackmail your father. Sir Mortimer Grant was all you could think of then. Now all you can think about is your wife, while my thoughts go a good deal further to all Corrosian's victims, past, present, and future. What's the matter? Suddenly lost your tongue? Now you understand this. We'll do everything we can to get your wife back. That goes for me and every other policeman in the country. We'll do it not just because it's our job, but because we're thinking of a lot of other poor devils quite apart from Mr. Michael Grant, millionaire. Look, Wes. And one more thing. Look, it's virtually certain Corrosian will contact you. When he does, don't get any crazy notions about trying anything on your own. What makes you think he'll contact me? He wants something from you, or he'd have had Christine killed. So when he gets in touch, play along. But if you've any sense at all, you'll come and tell me what he's asking you to do. You'll come straight to me, Mr. Grant. Yes, 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 all right, all right. So I said 1492. Well, now, that's a, that's a pretty sexy way to give out a phone number. <laughs> Roger. And at this early hour of the day, too. Oh, it's good to hear you, darling. I was rather expecting you to phone last night. Oh, I couldn't, Jan. I wasn't through until late. You'd have been fast asleep. Oh, I'm still not through. Have you, uh, have you seen the paper this morning? Not yet. Why? What is it, trouble? Mm-hmm. Bad? Oh, it couldn't be much worse. I'm not earning the compliments of the press at the moment. Darling, mm. what's gone wrong up there? What's in the morning paper? The headlines. A second murder at Uplands. Mm. And the disappearance of Mrs. Michael Grant. No. corrosion has got her, Jan. Whisked her off right under my nose. His neatest conjuring trick yet. Oh, blast him. If I could get my hands on him just once. Now, Roger, stop it. Yes, yes. All right. Now, listen to me, darling. Mm. Whatever you do, you mustn't turn this into a private war. Oh, it's that already. You slip through my fingers so often. Well, now. perhaps that's why. Just because getting him has always meant so much to you. Jan, this is no ordinary villain. Corrosion's big time. He's, he's vicious and deadly dangerous. Even when he was out of England, his organization was still operating. So you need all your wits about you, Roger. 
And I'm not only thinking of you, I'm thinking of that poor girl, too. And I remember how happy she looked coming out of that church. Makes me turn quite cold to think of it. Uh, oh. Oh, it's dark. So dark. Where? <gasps> Does the dog frighten you, Mrs. Grant? Who, who's that? Oh. Who's there? I have been waiting for you to wake up. Who are you? I, I can't see anything. It's so dark in here. The curtains are drawn. <gasps> now the dog is quite under control, Mrs. Grant. Where, where is it? Beside my chair. An Alsatian. Don't, don't let it come near me. You're very afraid, aren't you? Fear is a valuable emotion. The parent of respect, the mother of obedience. And obedience is something on which I place a great deal of importance. Who, who are you? This is our first meeting, Mrs. Grant. In person, that is to say. But I think you will know me if I pull the curtains aside. You. You Yes, are... Mrs. Grant. I am Carosia. So, all the Carosian men have gone to ground, have they, so? Yeah, but it appears so, Roger. We've given all their usual haunts of going over. Pubs, clubs, restaurants, nothing doing. Well, we're not having much luck, are we, so? At the moment, no. We can't find that waiter for Prendergast's murder, and as for Christine Grant, not a clue. Corrosion's winning all the way along the line. He's beaten me hollow. A word of advice, Roger. Well, I'll get him if it's the last thing I I'm do. I'm speaking a... to you, Chief Inspector. I'm sorry, sir. Don't make this a personal vendetta, Roger. That's exactly what Janet said, sir. Did she? Hmm, I've always had a high opinion of that wife of yours. She's perfectly right. It'd be an error to make this a personal issue. Clouds the judgment. You'll need all of that before this business is over. Let me remind you of what you said yourself. There's more behind all this than Corrosion's desire for revenge on young Grant. I'm more sure of that than ever. Though I, I still haven't the foggiest idea what it is. Oh, uh, incidentally, sir, I'd like to have some information on Arthur Morley's whereabouts. Oh, well, the girl's father? For what reason, precisely? Well, I haven't got a precise reason. Call it a hunch, if you like. Corrosion just might be making use of him. Oh? Well, Morley's recently out of prison. And Corrosian tried to blackmail Michael Grant about him just before the wedding. Did he? What's more, Arthur Morley was at the church. Janet and I saw him. Outside, uh, keeping well back where Christine couldn't spot him. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's to his credit. Spectre at the feast and all that. Quite a considerable spectre when you think of it. Thirteen years for murder. His own wife, the girl's mother. He was damn lucky to get a reprieve at all, if you ask me. Well, his daughter could use some of that luck right now, sir. We know what happens to girls who get into Corrosion's clutches. Quite. Most of the ones we know of were empty-headed little fools, of course, with bigger bus measurements than brains, and asking for trouble. All the same, they wound up with a devil of a sight more than they bargained for, or deserved. Yes? Ah, yes. You may take the train home. Okay, Mr. Corrosion. You did not eat very much, Mrs. Grant. No. I... I didn't feel like it. Where am I? Where is this place? That doesn't concern you. What does, possibly, is the fact that the grounds are guarded. By armed men, a number of Alsatian dogs. <gasps> I don't take you for a fool, my dear. Any notions of escape would be uh, <laughs> unintelligent of you. Why have I been brought here? What what are you going to do with me? I'm going to ask you to come and sit down. Here, on the settee, beside me. I'm all right where I am. Come here, I... Mrs. Grant. Have you forgotten what I told you so soon? The stress that I lay on obedience? No, I haven't forgotten. Good. Very good. So sit down. A little closer. I asked you to move a little closer. All right. If you're imagining what I suspect, I can disabuse you. 
You're a very beautiful young woman, but your attractions don't concern me. That may concern others. Others? I want you to look at something. A photograph album. It is part of a set. Yes, I think this page. Millicent Beswick. Look at her, Mrs. Grant. A beautiful girl, too, wouldn't you say? Yes, she's very beautiful. Now look at the next photograph. It's... But it can't be. It is also Millicent Beswick. But she looks like an old woman. The photographs were taken at an interval of only four years. Uh, this is what might be described as a before and after collection. But what could... In many interesting, although remote, parts of our world, Mrs. Grant, there is an unflagging demand for beautiful women. I'll leave this here with you. Browsing through it should be a salutary way for you to pass the time. Is... Is that what you intend for me? For the moment, all you need to know is that you are part of my plan. To get back at Michael because you failed to kill him. Failed? When that dog at Uplands killed someone else by mistake. There was no mistake. No mistake? What do you mean? If I had wanted your husband dead, it would have happened. Michael Grant was in no danger that night. Are you trying to say that you set the Alsatian onto a completely innocent man? Deliberately? Quite deliberately, Mrs. Grant. Just as the mask in your wardrobe, the shot fired at you by the swimming pool, they were all deliberate. You murdered an utter stranger to frighten us. It happened to fit into my scheme of things. But it's monstrous. I can't believe anybody Perhaps you can now understand why people obey me. Just as you do... As your husband will. Excuse me, Mr. Grant. Oh, waiter, good. Bring me another whiskey. Uh, you're wanted on the telephone, sir. Who is it, did they say? Uh, no, sir, just ask for you. Where's the phone? It's the one in the booth, uh, just outside the dining room, sir. Right, thanks. <laughs> Hello? Is that Mr. Michael Grant? Speaking. Who's that? My name doesn't matter at the moment. I'm calling about your wife. Chris! You'll be glad to know she's safe. What do you mean by safe? Exactly what I say, Mr. Grant. She's quite unharmed. And she'll remain that way as long as you do precisely what you're told. I hope that's clear. What are you after? Money? No, Mr. Grant. Now, first, and this is vital, you mustn't mention this call to the police under any circumstances. Unless that's understood, I shall hang up at once. All right, understood. Good. Next, you must leave the hotel. Drive to Salisbury. Salisbury? Why? Don't ask questions. Just listen. If you're followed by the police, go to the Castle Hotel in Salisbury, have a drink, and drive straight back to Uplands. Have you got that? Yes, go on. If they don't follow you, or if you can shake them off, then go to Salisbury Railway Station and get the 831 for London. The 831? It's the last through train. When you arrive at Waterloo Station, go into the long bar and wait. You'll be contacted again there and given your next instructions. Contacted by whom? No questions, Mr. Grant. Just follow the orders to the letter. Now, wait a minute. Salisbury. The 831 to Waterloo. She must be home. Come on, Jan. Chelsea, 1492. Uh, Jan, it's Roger. Oh. I'm ringing you from Salisbury Station. Salisbury? Well, what on earth are uh, you No, don't interrupt. Just listen. I was tailing young Grant, but he must have known it, and he's managed to lose me. I'm listening. Well, by a piece of sheer luck, I spotted his car outside the station here, and the booking clerk remembers him buying a ticket to Waterloo. But the train's gone ten minutes ago. So you've only just missed him? Mm. It gets into Waterloo at 10.26... I want you to be there, Jan. Me? And that's what I said. You'll know him. You saw him at the church, but he won't know you. But, um, why me? 
Well, he's obviously trying to dodge the police. I have to play this one pretty close to my chest. Now, I don't want anyone around who could even be remotely mistaken for a copper, male or female. So, get to Waterloo, watch what he does where he goes. I'll make it there as fast as I can. I'll drive like the clappers. Yes, yes, all right. But be careful. Uh, Don't worry. With any luck, I shouldn't be too far behind the train. And uh, don't worry about looking for me at Waterloo. I'll find you. All right, darling. Oh, just one more thing. Hmm? I'll be calling the yard. I want Chatworth to send two patrol cars to wait outside Waterloo and Station Approach Road. Now, if Grant leaves the station, go to the patrol boys, tell them to tail him. If not, you keep watch yourself till I get there, all right? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, good girl. Okay, then, till we meet at Waterloo. Oh, and, uh, Lady Wellington, you ought to wear your boots. (laughs) Bye for now. Jack. Oh, Roger, you made me jump. Not out of your boots, though. I see you did wear them. I was only kidding. Uh, what about Grant? Is he still here? Yes. In the long bar over there. He headed straight for it as soon as he stepped off the train. I popped in once, just to make sure he was still there. Oh, fine. Anyone with him? No. He was just sitting at one of the tables. Mm. Then we can take it his contact hasn't shown up yet. Contact? Well, that's what he's waiting for, obviously. Ah. Oh. Mm. Roger. Hmm? Look. Well, well, well. And making straight towards the long bar. So that's Grant's contact. Uh, Jan, you get in there. I'll have to keep out of sight as much as possible. Try and get as close to them as you can. See if you can pick up any of the conversation. Well, turn those boots around, my girl. Start walking. Off you go. Right, you go. Wait, you know where you go. Do you mind if I join you at this table, sir? Hmm? Well, actually, I'm expecting someone. I am the someone, Mr. Grant. Oh, are you? You've taken your time turning up. We have to be careful, very careful. I'll pull my chair a little closer. That's it. All right. What now? Do you know me, Mr. Grant? No, and I don't particularly... Wait a minute, your... Your voice. Was it you who... Who spoke to you on the telephone? Mm. Yes. But that's not what I meant. Have you ever seen me before? Or a photograph of me? No, I haven't. Hmm. Then you'll have to know... And I'm afraid I must warn you. It'll be something of a shock. I am Arthur Morley. Morley? I can appreciate how you must feel. Morley, the murderer, your father-in-law. But believe me, there would never have been a meeting between us, not ever, if it hadn't been for all this. You mean you're tied up in it when it's Christine, your own daughter? I'm only involved in the same way that you are, Mr. Grant, under compulsion. But you know where she is, where Chris has been taken. I... Yes, madam. Is there something wrong? Oh, uh, do forgive me. I've dropped my handbag. No, 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 please. I can get it. I'll do it. Here you are. Thank you. So kind of you. Well, come on, man. What about Chris? Do you know where she is? No, Mr. Grant. I was only ordered to phone you to meet you here with the next part of your instructions and warn that we'd be watched. That if I stepped out of line, Christine would suffer for it. Corrosium, the filthy... Mr. Grant, we daren't go against him. That man... I used to hear talk now and then while I was in prison. You can't begin to know what he's like. Are you sure you weren't followed? West came after me from Uplands, but I managed to lose him in Salisbury, as you told me. Good, very good. So, now let's have my instructions. You must go down to the underground to take the tube to Victoria and... What is it now, madam? Your handbag again? No, no, it's my lipstick, I'm afraid. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. It it, it fell somewhere. Um, Oh, yes, there it is. It's terribly clumsy of me. I do apologize. Oh... I beg your pardon. Yes, all right. Yes, excuse me, gents. You spare an old fella a couple of bob. Some other time. Clear off, will you? What about your friend, then? What about you, eh, Mr. Marley? What? Oh, oh, yes, certainly. Uh, here you are. Uh, it's all right, I've here, you gentlemen. Let me shake you by the hand. Ah. Uh, that's the ticket. Sir, sir, very much. What the devil? Morley, how did he know your name? One of Corrosian's watchdogs, Mr. Grant. I told you we'd be under observation. What have you got there? A scrap of paper. A note he slipped into my hand. Well, what's it say? It says that you didn't follow orders, Mr. Grant. What? You didn't lose Inspector West in Salisbury. He's here, right here on Waterloo Station. Here? Do you realize exactly what that means? What you've done? You've disobeyed Corrosian. And you've signed my daughter's death warrant. <laughs> You 
You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the second part of Battle for Inspector West by John Creasy. Listen to Shadow on a Millionaire, the next episode of John Fawcett Wilson's production of Battle for Inspector West. Stand by for West. A Crime File, based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard and Sarah Lawson as his wife Janet. Part three, Shadow on a Millionaire. I tell you, I did exactly as you told me, Morley. I swear it. I didn't breathe a word to West about your phone call. Then how is it that he's here, somewhere out there on Waterloo Station? I don't know. I lost him back in Salisbury, I'm sure of it. Obviously you didn't. Well, what makes you so dead certain? You haven't seen him here yourself. Simply because some scruffy character comes sliding into the bar, slips you a dirty scrap of paper. He was one of Corrosian's men, Mr. Grant. And the orders from Corrosian were unmistakable. If the police have brought into this, Christine will pay for it. My daughter will pay with her life. I didn't bring them in. Well, there's only one thing to be done now. We must call the whole thing off. You must go back to Uplands. Go back? Yes, that's the answer. If you return to Dorset to the hotel, Inspector West will follow. That will make it clear to Corrosian that you didn't involve the police deliberately. And then he'll do nothing to my Christine. Your Christine? It's a little late to be playing the devoted father, isn't it? But not too late. She's your wife, but she's my daughter too, Mr. Grant. How else do you think Corrosian could have forced me into doing all this? Do you think a prison cell alters a man's feelings for his own flesh and blood? Morley, look in the doorway. He's back. Well, it isn't the same man, isn't it? Who gave you the note? What the devil does he want now? Excuse me again, Jen, sir. I haven't come back for another handout, though. I only wanted to, uh, wait five minutes. Found a way to fix the bogey. Keep him too busy to bother with you two. Five minutes. Okay? So, uh, thanks again, Gov. Uh, one of the right sort. That's what you are. Morley, what? It seems there is a way out for us after all. We do as he said. Wait here for five minutes and then go. And you'll be able to follow the remainder of your instructions. Oh, the nurse he got to. Jan, oh. Janice, over here. Oh, thank heavens, darling. I've been looking everywhere. Roger, what's happened to your face? Look at your jacket. I ran into a spot of bother. Uh, did you manage to overhear anything between young Grant and Arthur Morley? Well, they know you're here, Roger. That's why I left the bar to warn you. Well, you needn't bother, Jan. I worked that out for myself. Oh, how? Jan, who came into the bar and talked to Grant and Morley? Some kind of tramp. He came in twice. But how did you know that? I'll tell you later. The main thing is, did you hear any instructions from Morley about Grant's next move? Only one thing. Well? Grant was to take the tube to Victoria Station. Victoria. Right, come on. Where are we going? Out to Station Approach Road. I asked for a couple of patrol cars to wait there. But don't you want me to go back into the bar? I might be able to hear more. And not tonight, Jan, my girl. Those two will have gone by this time anyway. Well, how can you be sure? A little bird told me. A yobbo bird. Or three of them, to be precise. What are you talking about? A minor skirmish with the three yobbos I mentioned. Uh, hence my face and this tear in my jacket. Yes, what happened exactly? Well, these three characters bumped into me and started a punch-up. Didn't last long, and I rather think they got a little more than they bargained for. But the trick worked just the same. Trick? Well, don't you see it, Jan? All accidentally, on purpose. While I was otherwise engaged, Grant and Morley have enough time to nip out of the bar without being spotted. Oh, Corrosion's organization is working a treat. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I should never have come out of the bar. Well, don't expect me to blame you for that, after all. If a wife won't worry about her husband, who will, then? Ah, there are the cars. So, where to now? Victoria? For me, but not for you. You can pack off home. Oh. You've done your bit and done it nobly. But, Roger, uh, uh, I... uh, You heard me. 
I'll call the yard and get every plain clothesman they can spare over to Victoria Station to keep a watch on Morley and Grant's movements. Uh, Constable, this is my wife. Take her home, will you? Chelsea, Bell Street. Right, Inspector. Bye, Jan. Bye, darling. Good luck. I'm going to need it. You and I are going to Victoria, my lad. Come on, put your foot down. Yes, sir. This is it now, Mr. Grant. Victoria. Are you getting out here, too? No, I stay on the tube. I've done my part. From now on, you're on your own. You know what to do, but remember, we were lucky to get away from West. Don't do anything careless now. I won't. What happens at the other end, Morley? After I've got to East Croydon. Simply wait outside the station there for your next contact. Go on now before the door's shut. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Good evening, sir. What? Oh, uh, Porter, good evening. Uh, can I help you, sir? Seeing you walking up and down. If you're after a taxi... No, uh, no, I'm waiting for friends to collect me. Uh, oh, a uh, car coming now, sir. Uh, that'll be your friends, I expect. <sighs> Why don't they dim those headlights? Blind a man. Night, sir. Night, Porter. Mr. Grant? What? Get in quickly, please. Well, I... I wasn't expecting a lady or a Rolls complete with chauffeur. Into the back here. Hurry. How could I possibly refuse such a charming invitation? All right, Hendricks. Drive on. Now, who are you? And where are we going? Ask no questions, Mr. Grant. Make no trouble. That is, if you wish to see your wife again. Is that where you're taking me, to see Chris? Sit back, Mr. Grant. Relax. And in case you have any reckless thoughts in your head, I must tell you I'm holding a gun. Are you also going to tell me your name? My name is Julietta. Julietta what? Julietta is as much as you need to know. I see. Is there any objection to my smoking, Miss Julietta, if it is, Miss? It is... There is no objection. Thank you. Cigarette, or perhaps you don't? Not at this moment. Ah. Mr. Grant, the match. Hmm? Oh, damn. Did you burn your finger? You find that funny, do you? It is you I find funny. And also very obvious. Obvious? You didn't want a cigarette. Only an excuse to light the match so that you could see me. I hope you are not disappointed. Oh, you're a... You're a very striking young woman. No two ways about that. Or about the gun in your hand. Did you doubt that I had it? I never trouble to lie, Mr. Grant. In that, I'm like Corrosian. You talk as if you know him very well. I do. Certainly well enough to say that if you do anything stupid, your beautiful wife will not remain beautiful. She will find herself wishing she had never heard the name of Michael Grant. You... If he's touched her, if that swine's laid so much as a finger on Chris... You will do what? Please tell me. I'd be interested to know. What do you imagine you can do against such a man as Corrosian? You're helpless. Sit back, Mr. Grant. Sit still. Smoke your cigarette. That is all you can do. What you are told. No more and no less. Chatter speaking. Uh, Roger West here, sir. Yeah. All right. Let's have it, Roger. What's going on? Oh, not very much. 
much. Looks like we've come to a full stop, period. Have you lost Grant? As of this moment, yes. Uh, one of the chaps at Victoria got onto his tracks. We know Grant took a train for East Croydon, so I came straight down here. I uh, found a porter who saw a Rolls-Royce pick him up. Mm -hmm. I got onto the local police, uh, organized the Sussex, Surrey and Kent police to cooperate. Radio cars are out watching all the possible roads, but uh, I can't say I fancy our chances, sir. Uh, it's a hell of an area to cover, especially at night. Well, what do you propose to do now? Pack it in? No, sir. Oh, I should have known better than to ask, I suppose. I may as well see the rest of the night out. Never can tell. Maybe the age of miracles isn't quite over. Well, I know very little about miracles, but I do know it was Thomas Edison who said genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. He might equally well have been referring to police work, eh, Roger? Mm. Now, good night. Is everything all right, Hendricks? Yes, fine. What was all that for? Why did you stop? A last-minute precaution, Mr. Grant. To be sure that we are not followed, since we are so near our destination. And where's that? Be patient. Let us wait until we arrive. You're enjoying this, aren't you? You and Corrosian are two of a kind right enough. You get a kick out of keeping people on the rack. At least tell me if I'm going to see Chris. That's the only thing I care about. Well, it can't hurt you to tell me that, can it? It really matters so much. How strange. To hold so much feeling for someone else. What the hell strange about it? What kind of a woman are you? We've had just one day of our honeymoon, Chris and I. And your friend Corrosion turned even those first few hours into a nightmare. What's he done to her? Where's he got her? She has not been harmed. Her father told you so. It is the truth. Julietta. What's Corrosion want? Is it money? He can have every penny I've got. I'm worth near enough to a million. He does not want your money, Mr. Grant. Then what? Sheer revenge, is that it? Because I put a stop to his blackmail of my father. You will know very soon. We're turning off the road. Yes. We have arrived, Mr. Grant. Wait a minute. That line of poplars... This driveway... Does it seem familiar? Yes, but... That's crazy. It couldn't be. In a moment, you will see the house. There, in the car headlights. This isn't possible. But it is. Your father's house. The home of Sir Mortimer Grant. You go into that room, Mr. Grant. There, to your right, at the foot of the staircase. I don't need to tell you what room it is, do I? You know this house better than I do. Who's in there? Who would you expect? It is your father's study. Dad's here? But why is the place practically in darkness and... Well, where's all the household staff? Ask your questions in the study, Mr. Grant. I'll do just that. Dad! Well, Michael? Dad, what the blazes goes on here? Would you, uh, Would you like a drink? I'd like to know what's going on. Is Chris here, in this house? No, Mr. Grant. What the... Corrosion. Do you never look behind you on entering a room? Dad, what's he doing here? My kids. Please go on, Sir Mortimer. I think your son deserves an explanation. Well, Dad... I'm sorry, boy. The fact of it is, he carries too many guns for me. For you, too. We have to do what he says, Mike. What are you talking about? I settled all that nearly a year ago. Got all the stuff he had against you out of his flat. Not all of it, Mr. Grant. What? Your frontal assault on my apartment could not be accurately described as an outright victory. Much as I regret to diminish your heroic stature, at least in your own eyes, if no others... I must tell you that the evidence you obtained was only a part of the whole. Dad, is he telling the truth? I never lie. Dad. Yes. Yes, it's true. Every word. The status quo has been restored. Your father once more takes his instructions from me. Indeed, he has been doing so ever since my return to England. Why didn't you tell me this, Dad? What would have been the use, my boy? Very well, that will do, Sir Mortimer. 
You are allowed to go. Yes. Yes, all right. I'm sorry, Mike, but you see how it is. I trust that you do indeed see how it is, Mr. Grant. Corosian, what's to stop me putting my hands round your throat right this minute and choking the life out of you? Not a thing in the world. With the possible exception of your wife. You... Where is she? Safe. For the moment. All right. What do you want? A brandy would be pleasant, I think. A poor one for me and for yourself, of course. I said, what do you want, Corosian? And I have told you. I'm waiting, Mr. Grant. You... For my brandy. There it is. I would prefer you to hand it to me. All right. Thank you. Now, what do you want out of me? That girl, Julietta, said it wasn't money. Perfectly true. Not money and not revenge. I uh, find myself in a forgiving frame of mind. Your father has learned his lesson, as you saw. He is quite content to obey me. As for you, I am prepared, as I said, to forget your gallant effort on his behalf. What's past is past. I am concerned far more with the future. And it involves me? In a way. You and your wife are a part of it. A small part, but not unimportant. Incidentally, she's charming. I like her. Corrosion. Oh, reassure yourself. She's quite unblemished. I cannot guarantee that state of affairs to endure, however, unless, like your father, you obey me in every particular. Well, what do I have to do? Nothing too arduous. Simply return to Upland. And stay there until further orders. You made me come all this way from Dorset just to send me back there? I made you come all this way from Dorset so that you could receive a full and explicit appreciation of the situation. I've got that all right. I should also explain to you that if I judge it necessary, an attempt may be made at Uplands to kill you. Kill me? I said an attempt. You won't be hurt in any way. But if I decide it should take place, I shall expect you to react in the appropriate manner, to be very frightened, very worried. I don't get this. I'm supposed to go back to the hotel, stay there like a sitting duck and yell blue murder if someone uses me for a target? What's it all in aid of? My plans at this stage call for a decoy, a sitting duck, as you so neatly put it. You should fill the role excellently. But why? What is it you're planning? That has nothing to do with you. But it is something rather interesting. Now, you understand quite clearly what I require of you. I think so. Be absolutely sure, Grant. Yes, all right, damn you, I'll do what you say. That's better. Now, when can I see Chris? I will decide that when the time comes. Ah, Julietta. Well... Has Mr. Grant had the answers to all his questions? He has. Where's Hendricks? Outside in the hall, waiting. Very well. Hendricks will return you to London, Mr. Grant. Then you'll make your way back to Dorset. And what do I tell the police? Especially Chief Inspector West. Most of the truth. You received a phone call. You came to our house in the hope of finding your wife. But she wasn't there. I needn't say that you will not mention the precise house. Tell West that you were blindfolded and put in a car. Oh, you can embroider it all very prettily, I'm quite sure. But alas, the whole affair turned out to be a wild goose chase. You think West will swallow that? He's no fool, I might tell you. Neither is Corrosion. And please remember, my orders are to be followed meticulously... Otherwise, you'll never see your charming wife again. Now you may go. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Perhaps we will meet again. I prefer to hope not. Are you Hendricks? Yes. All set? Certainly. Okay, let's go. The car's just over there. What? 
He wasn't much trouble, was he? Who the... West! Corrosion's here, isn't he, Grant? Where the devil have you sprung from? Uh, never mind that now. Uh, you men, one of you get rid of Chummy here. Uh, you constable, drive the car away. Best if they believe Mr. Grant's gone. Yes, Inspector? Uh, the other two stick with me. Now, Grant, where's Corrosion? How did you get here, West? Call it a small miracle. One of the local bicycle bobbies spotted the rolls. We kept tabs on it, radio contact all the time. If Corrosion thinks I had any part in this, he'll kill Christie. He won't get the chance. I have a dozen men watching this place. Corrosion hasn't a hope in hell. I've got him at last. Now, where is he? What room? That one? The foot of the stairs? No, no, no. He he was upstairs in, in my old room. Down the first passage, uh, the end door on the left. Right. Uh, did you say your room? This is my father's house. Huh? Well, this is your chance to get even. Lead the way. West, I... West, I've had a hell of a time. I'm... I'm just about all in. All right, you stay put. You chaps, follow me. Move quietly. First passage, last door on the left. Right, nice and nippy up the stairs, lad. They're out of sight now. Grant, quiet. Why are you here? I heard the car leaving. That was the police. Police? West's here. He's got men all round the house. But how is that possible? Carouse it. We were not followed. We checked. Be quiet, Juliet. You can still get away. There's a way out through the cellars. An old tunnel. I found it when I was a kid. I'll show you. Good. I will remember this, Grant, to your credit. Julieta, get my papers from the desk drawer. Then Grant will show us the way. Quickly now, we've no time to lose. You let him go, Grant. You warn Corrosion and let him get away. How could I? You found me where you left me, didn't you, waiting out in the hall? Where was he? In this study, all the time? I had him right in my hands. Do you realize I could put you under arrest for obstructing the police in the course of their duty? And the same goes for your father. Uh, Chief Inspector... I suggest the less you say, the better, sir. You've been sheltering a known criminal in your house. I've explained that. I did so under duress. Meaning what? Are you telling me he held a gun at your head the whole time? Don't play games with me, sir. Not tonight. I'm not in the mood. In my opinion, it's a fortunate thing you didn't get corrosion. Have you any idea how long I've been after him? How often he's given me the slip? And he'd have done so again, even if you'd caught him tonight. Like hell he would. On what charge could you have held him, Inspector? Kidnapping my son's wife? That's just one item on a long, long list. But you haven't enough evidence to stand up in court, have you? Dad's right. We know he did it, but how could you prove it? I'd have found proof once I had him. West, you just find Chris for me. Get her back and I'll get Corrosion. I'll deliver him to you personally, I promise you that. Don't talk through the back of your neck. And don't play heroes with me. You tried that once, remember? Busting into his flat all on your own. And where did it get you? Exactly nowhere. For all your personal private eye caper, your father's still under Corrosion's thumb. That sticks out a mile. And now you're in the same boat. West, I'm... Oh, don't say it. Just don't tell me you're sorry right at this moment. That would be more than I could take. I'll trouble you gentlemen to leave this room. I'm going over it from top to bottom. Thank you. Well, Roger, is that the whole story? Uh, pretty well, sir. Go oh, on, I feel like hell about it. Talk about being so near and yet so far. Relax, Chief Inspector. Remember, Corrosion is just one more criminal. Dealing with criminals is your job. You won't do your job properly if you transform him into some kind of obsession. I have a notion I may have said something of the sort to you before. Yes, sir. Um, oh, but it's not so easy to do. In which case, the quicker we lay him by the heels, the better for all concerned. Mm. Did the search of Sir Mortimer Grant's house produce anything at all? Only one thing, sir. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I've got it here in my wallet. Oh, there, take a look, sir. Hmm. I found that piece of paper in Sir Mortimer Grant's study, caught in the corner of a drawer in his desk. There were a couple of empty folders, too. Corrosion had obviously been using the room as his office. And this was torn from a larger sheet of paper, by the look of it. Hmm. Yeah, there's three names on it. Notice how they're written, sir, one under the other. Part of a list, eh? Hmm. The beginning of one. And the, the names themselves. Donna, Riversley, Barai. There's hardly the common or garden variety. Not too difficult to identify, is it? Sir Arnold Donna, one of our foremost industrialists. And not exactly short in the bank balance. Runs well over the two million mark, I'd say. Lord Riversley owns more of London than you can cover in half a day's walk. And Laszlo Barai, Hungarian origin, naturalized British subject, special economic advisor to the Ministry for National Expansion. There's no great wealth there, though, from what I understand. Small private income. And his salary, of course. Yes, that's the stumbling block. 
How do you mean, Roger? At first sight, sir, I thought those three names must be part of a wholesale blackmail list of corrosions. Only Barai doesn't quite fit, does he? Well, I don't know so much. Not in the same class as Dana and Riversley, of course. But little fish are sweet, as they say. Even to corrosion, I imagine. You could be right, I suppose. Reasonable enough on the face of it. But, uh, but what? Oh, nothing definite, sir. Just a nagging notion I have that it's not really the whole answer. I'd like to talk with each of these three eminent gentlemen, uh, with your approval, sir. Mm, go ahead, by all means. What's the state of the polls where the Grants, father and son, are concerned? Sir Mortimer's still in his house where I left him. Young Grant was on his way down to Dorset. Now back to the hotel, eh? Yes. Unless I'm very much mistaken, he'll be sitting at Uplands waiting for further orders from Corrosion. And I'd give a lot to know just what those orders are likely to be. It's ringing now. Hello? Good afternoon, Mr. Grant. Who's that? You do not recognize my voice after our long drive together? Julietta? Yes, Mr. Grant. What do you want? I have someone here to speak to you. You mean Chris? Is it Chris? Hello? Hello? I am here, Mr. Grant. Corrosion. I have some instructions for you. Listen carefully. After breakfast tomorrow, you will walk along the path through the shrubbery. An attempt will be made on your life. A bullet which will miss you. As a result, you will be extremely afraid and tell the police that you are leaving Uplands. You will go to Skelbourne on the Kent coast. You know it? Yes. You will take a room at the Excelsior Hotel on the seafront and wait there for your next orders. What's all this about? You have been told all that you need to know. Goodbye. Corrosian. What is it, Julieta, my dear? I have not been told all I need to know. What are you planning? A small surprise. For Michael Grant? Oh, no. For someone of much greater importance. An astute police officer whose very astuteness might just conceivably prove a trifle troublesome for me in the future. You are speaking of West. He has laid many traps for me over the years, and I've escaped them all. Now I propose to reverse the procedure. And I assure you, Julietta, there will be no escape from my trap for Chief Inspector Roger West. You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the third part of Battle for Inspector West by John Creasy. Listen to Bait for a Bogey, the next episode of John Fawcett Wilson's production of Battle for Inspector West. The Battle for Inspector West, Part 4. A Crime File, based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part four. Bait for a bogey. Good morning, Sergeant. Oh, you're here, Inspector. That's a relief. Is it? Why? The old man, sir. Chatty's really on the rampage. Uh, Sergeant Gill, if you're referring to the Assistant Commissioner, I suggest you stick to Sir Guy Chatworth. Uh, yes, sir. He's raising the roof, though. I've had him on the blower every half hour on the half hour, wanting to know where you'd got to. Hmm. Well, you didn't tell me, sir, so I couldn't tell him. That seems logical enough, Hubert. Anyway, he wants you in his office right away. In that case, I'd better trot along, hadn't I? Uh, good luck, sir. Oh, thanks. See you later. You're a dash sight too fond of taking off on your own, Chief Inspector. I remind you, this is Scotland Yard, not a fancy private detective bureau. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I give you too much rope, that's the trouble. You think I don't know what they all say? West? Oh, he can get away with murder. Chatty's blue-eyed boy. That's how I'm referred to, I believe. I wouldn't know, sir. Oh, wouldn't you? Don't just stand there like a stuffed dummy. Sit down. Uh, yes, sir. 
you seen today's papers? Not all of them, sir. I have, and so has the commissioner. I've had him on the phone and on my back. Look at these. Christine Grant, still missing. No trace of millionaire's wife. Double murders and the vanishing bride. Tragedy strikes in Dorset Honeymoon Hotel. Newsmen are having a field day. I like the poor, so the press are always with us. Only a damn sight too vocal at the moment. What about this one, the morning echo? Read that. Uh, police raid on home of Sir Mortimer Grant. A search for corrosion? No comment from Scotland Yard. <laughs> I could give them a comment or two, but they'd be unprintable. I'd have got corrosion the other night in Sir Mortimer's house if young Grant hadn't ruined it for me. You're quite convinced Michael Grant did warn corrosion. And helped him get away, no question of it, sir. I suppose I can't blame him with his wife in Corrosion's hands. Not hard to put myself in his place, if it was Janet. Yes, quite. I take it the Dorset police are still watching young Grant at Uplands. They are. The minute he makes any move, I'll know about it. Hmm. What about those names you found in Sir Mortimer's desk? I'm following that up, sir. I have appointments today with Sir Arnold Darner and with Lord Riversley. And the third one, uh, Laszlo Barai? He's away, sir, in Oslo, till next week. As government delegate to the Six Nations Economic Conference. Mm, these are pretty important men, Roger. You don't think you could be barking up the wrong tree, do you? Possibly. But it's the only tree I've got. Those names are part of a list. And whatever Corrosion's really up to, that list is a pointer. I'll swear to it. Yes? Yes, this is Corrosion. Who's that? No, I do not want your name. Give me your number. Oh, not the number of the telephone you're calling from. The one on your pass. Yes, the red disc. 32. Hmm. Very well. I'll make your report. I see. West has talked to them both. Dana and Riversley. Yes, you were perfectly right to inform me. You've done well. But the matter of Chief Inspector West is already in hand. Goodbye. All right, let's have it, Roger. We'll take the big industrialist first, shall we? No, oh, Sir Arnold Dunn is very big and very industrious. He was flying off to the northeast on an inspection tour of some of his factories. He gave me exactly ten minutes. Did you get anything out of him? A cigarette, the offer of a scotch, and a nine-and-a-half-minute lecture on how this country ought to be run on sound commercial principles. And the remaining half minute? Well, Thirty seconds was all he needed to say he knew nothing about anyone called corrosion. He had no truck with people on the wrong side of the law. And what the devil was I doing wasting his valuable time? Hmm, what about Lord Riversley? I fared further, but no better. He wasn't any more help than Donna. Hmm. I'd like a watch put on both of them, sir. And on Laszlo Barai when he returns to London. You think it's warranted? Just in case, sir. I've already got a man keeping an eye on young Grant's father-in-law. Oh, have you? You think Arthur Morley's liable to be further involved in all this? Oh, could be. Corrosion's forced him into playing go-between once. It uh, could happen again. Mm. I'll tell you something, Roger. Mm. I don't, as a rule, find myself feeling any sympathy for murderers, but in Morley's case... I know what you mean, sir. It's all a nasty business, of course, strangling his wife, mother of his child, and all the rest of it. But in a way, rather pathetic. The unreasoning jealousy thing, you mean? Well, the man was an artist of sorts. Crime of passion and so forth, eh? And then after a reprieve and 13 years behind bars, the chap comes out to find his daughter snatched by corrosion day after her wedding. That is why I'm keeping him under observation. I've got to get some lead to corrosion and where he's keeping Christine Grant. Chadworth? Oh, yes, Sergeant Gill. Yes, he is. Uh, just a moment. For you, Roger. You're silent. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Hubert. Uh, what is it? Well, this morning. But he wasn't hurt. I see, right. Uh, thanks for letting me know straight away. Uh, bye. Well, what was all that? An attempt was made at Uplands this morning to kill Michael Grant. What? Uh, someone took a pot shot at him. The bullet went wide. Bit of luck for young Grant that it did, eh? Yes, sir. But this will bear thinking about... Deserves quite a bit of thought, in fact. Roger? Are you asleep? Mm. Uh, no. Did you hear what I was saying? Uh, no, one. Well, I was... Oh, listen to that, Roger. Hmm? On the radio. Oh. Uh. Goodness, it takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> they were always playing it at those crazy parties in the good old days. When I was still going to art classes and you were hoping like mad that one day you'd get to the yard. Mm. There's a fine romantic response, I must say. Hey, -ha. little did you dream then, Janet, my girl, that you'd wind up sitting with a needle and a thread and a husband who grunts. Who'd be a wife and a mother? 
Don't be a copper. All right. We'll have this off for a start. Now, my dear Chief Inspector, I think it's high time you told me what's the matter. Uh, nothing you need worry your head over, Jan. Oh, don't be silly, Roger. The boys and I hardly got a word out of you all through dinner. And ever since, you've been sitting in that chair like a stone image. What's wrong, darling? I'll give you three guesses. Corrosion. Right first time. You're not making any progress, is that it? Progress? <laughs> I've forgotten there ever was such a word. Would you like a small piece of advice? <laughs> I'm obviously going to get it whether I'd like it or not. Yes, you are. Put all this business out of your mind for a few hours. Have an early night and, well, see what tomorrow brings. So that I can rise up bright and shining, wakey-wakey. And the bell goes for the next round, Corrosion versus West. And guess who'll finish up on the canvas? Roger, this isn't like you a bit. I've never known a case get you down like this before. It's no average case, Jan. Corrosion's up to something, and it's something big. I can smell it. I've known it, felt it in my bones ever since I heard he was back in England. And I'll tell you something else. Something I haven't even said to Chatworth. What's that? I have a notion that the whole of this affair so far, snatching young Grant's wife, the whole thing is just a blind kind of smokescreen. A smokescreen for what? Yes, that's the puzzle. For what? I'll get it. No, 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 you won't. You stay in that chair. I'll take it. If it's the yard, I'll talk to them. If it's the yard, you've gone out to the pub, the pictures, anywhere, but you are out. Chelsea 1492. Is that Mrs. West? Yes. Sergeant Gill here, Mrs. West. Could I have a word with the chief inspector, please? Um, uh, Sergeant Gill, I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid he's gone out. He's just come back. Roger. Now, let me have that phone, Jan. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, you are impossible. I'll go make some coffee. Hello, Hubert. Are you still on duty? Uh, not officially, sir, but the paperwork's been piling up. As usual, then. Uh, the thing is, sir, some information's just come in, and I thought you'd want to hear it immediately. All uh, right, far away. It's about Michael Grant. He's left Uplands. He's left? Yes, sir. But the Dorset inspector put a man on him. Grant's been tailed to the Excelsior Hotel in Skelbourne. You know the place? Sir? Yes, I know. At a resort on the Kent coast. And there's something else, sir. Yes? A report from the man we've got watching Arthur Morley. Morley's in Skelbourne, too. Is he now? Staying in a cheap lodging house. Must be planning a spot of painting. Oh? Uh -huh. He's bought himself some brushes and canvas. I see. Anything else, Hubert? Uh, no, sir. That's the one. All right, then. Thanks for ringing. Um... Any idea what this could add up to, sir? Only that Morley and Grant will be acting under orders from Corrosion, that's for certain. Night, Hubert. Mm. Here we are. You'll have some coffee, won't you? Uh, yes, fine. And what did Sergeant Gill want? Oh, uh, nothing much. Uh, a message he forgot to give me. Hmm. It's a wonder he didn't ring when you were fast asleep. That's the time the yard usually seems to call. Here, it's sugared. Thanks. Roger. I said it's sugared. Uh, oh, yes. Ah, oh, jolly good. Why doesn't coffee ever taste as good as it smells? Yes, 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 you like it when Julietta plays with you, eh? <laughs> My big... Fierce Lucifer. Oh. <laughs> My strong, savage, devil dog. So sharp teeth only bite when Julietta orders it, when she gives the word, eh? But like this, when we play, he's no more than a puppy. <laughs> only a puppy. <laughs> Julietta. <laughs> Carosian, how long have you been standing there? A few moments. I have been watching. Of all the Alsatians, this one is your favorite, isn't he? <laughs> yes. No, 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 enough, Lucifer. Playtime is over. Quiet now. He obeys you implicitly. As I obey you, Carosian. You're a woman of great beauty, Julietta, my dear. But by far the most beautiful thing about you is what I have made. What Carosian has created. Devotion. Obedience with no obstruction from puerile emotion. I drink to you, Julietta. You are pleased, Carosian. I can see it. I confess I have some cause for satisfaction at the moment. My uh, arrangements for Chief Inspector West are almost complete. 
Michael Grant is in Skelborn, waiting for his next instructions. And Arthur Morley is also at the resort. And Captain Marco has been given his orders. You are using the motor cruiser. It will heave to offshore by dawn. And so the strands of my net are spread. Do you think Roger West will step into it? You, my dear Julietta, with the assistance of your favorite there, will make perfectly certain that he does. <laughs> you hear that, Lucifer? <laughs> Office, Detective Sergeant Gill speaking. West here. Morning, Hubert. You're in Brighton early. Oh, I'm one of these keen characters. Didn't you know, sir? Oh, are you? Now, listen, Hubert. I've decided to go down to Skelborn, see if I can find out what the score is. I see, sir. But I want it kept strictly between ourselves, got it? Yes, sir. Uh, but what if Chatty, I mean the assistant commissioner, wants to know where you are? Just play dumb. You're going on your own, sir? That's right. Isn't that a bit dodgy, sir? Just do as I say. Keep quiet about it. Bye now, Sergeant. Devil, where those damn things got to? Oh. Jan, Janet. Yes, what's uh, Here a minute, will you? Where are you? In the bedroom. Oh, I'm coming. Should be here somewhere. Yes, darling, what you? <laughs> what's the joke? <laughs> you are, Roger. Have you seen yourself? Hmm? That frightful shirt and that dreadful old sports coat and no trousers. Well, that's what I'm hunting for, my brown slacks, the old pair. Have you seen them anywhere? Oh, they should be in your wardrobe somewhere. Well, I've just looked. Well, let's see. And what are these? Oh, damned if I could find them. Thanks, Chan. Now then. Roger, what is all this? You haven't shaved. No, Jan. Uh, no, that's it. Don't tell me you're actually going to take a day off and do a bit of work in the garden. Uh, not this time, uh... I'm off on a small job. What's in that? Get up. <laughs> what if that's supposed to be a disguise? I have to tell you, you'll never win any Sherlock Holmes award. Roger West ticks out a mile. You think so, do you? I know so, darling. You may be an A1 detective, an absolutely brilliant bogey. Bogey? Where on earth do you pick up all these underworld expressions? Where do you imagine? Uh, Jan, I don't know how long this job will take. Uh, I could be away for some little time, uh, so if you don't hear from me for a bit, uh, don't get too worried. Uh. No more than usual, darling. After all, it's not the first time. I don't suppose it'll be the last, will it? Good girl. Shall I tell you something? What? You look smashing this morning. Smashing? Mm. You must have the sun in your eyes. I haven't done my face yet. Hardly had time to run a comb through my hair. And the overall effect knocks me out. Just come here, Mrs. West. Oh, now, Roger. Ah, ah, here, I said. But the boys are waiting for them. Come here. Mm. That's it. Mm. Oh. That was a bit overwhelming for this time of the day. In case I haven't mentioned it lately. I love you, Jan. And in return for that undying declaration, I'll expect a whacking great breakfast. So down you go to the kitchen and sharpish. Well, let's hear the rest of it, Sergeant Gill. Uh, that's all there is, sir. I see. I just hope I've done the right thing, sir. I... And I feel a bit of a traitor. The more I think about it, the more it bothers me, the Chief Inspector going off like that. I should damn well think it would. He was pretty insistent you shouldn't know about it, sir. He'll have my scalp, I suppose, when he learns I've told you. Well, I'd have had your stripes if you hadn't, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I have a good mind to have him anyway. Why the devil didn't you come to me at once? He'd be on his way to Skelburne by now. Then you do think I might be right, sir. That it could be a trap of corrosions. Well, anything's possible where that individual is concerned. And if it is a trap? Roger West's gone marching straight into it. Taking the bait, hook, line and sinker. Ah, of all the obstinate, pig-headed... Gil, get after him. West has hounded corrosion more than any man alive. If he falls into his hands now... Go on, man, get moving. And I'll contact the Skelburne police. Let's just hope we can be in time. Good morning. Oh, good morning. A fine day. It's a beautiful day. I see you don't object to an audience while you paint. Not in the least. In fact, I had quite a crowd a little while ago. Most of them children. 
Now that lady and gentleman and yourself, of course, are all that's left. Kids get bored that easy nowadays, don't they, Fred? Aye. It's natural. Children have more and better things to do at the seaside than watch someone dabbling about with a brush and canvas. You dabble to some purpose, if uh, that picture's anything to go by. Very kind of you. My hand has sadly lost its cunning, I'm afraid. I haven't held a brush for over 13 years. Ooh. Well, you never know. I call it a lovely picture, don't you, Fred? Aye, not wrong with that. Mm, just like a photo it is. Hey, Fred, there's one of them incisions coming this way. Let's go, love. I hate them brutes. Fancy mm. horrible, Adam. Go with them, quickly. I beg your pardon. Please, I know who you are, Inspector West, and you know perfectly well I'm Arthur Morley. There's no time. Quickly, before that young woman and the dog... It's too late. Right now, Lucifer. Ah. Oh. So, this is the celebrated Chief Inspector Roger West. You must be confusing me with someone else, young lady. My name's uh, Jack Robinson. Hardly an imaginative choice. And the disguise is not very effective. I don't know who you are, Miss... Uh... I'm called Julietta. The Alsatian's name is Lucifer. He has been very carefully trained, like your police dogs. If I utter one certain word, he will leap at your throat, Roger West. Oh, that's a charming thought. I am sure in the circumstances you would prefer simply to accompany me. Where to? Glance out to sea. You will observe a motor cruiser? <laughs> Can't very well miss it. A handsome vessel, do you not agree? A very opulent. Whose is it? Was that a silly question? It belongs to Corrosian, yes. As you do, I take it. You could say that. Ah, <laughs> oh, be patient. Be patient, Lucifer. We will go in a moment. There is a launch waiting to take us out to the cruiser, Roger West, at the end of that jetty. It sounds as if I'd been expected. You have? Why do you imagine Michael Grant was told to come to Skelborn? And Mr. Morley here also. Corrosian knew it would fetch you. Inspector, I had no choice. You can understand that, can't you? You have children of your own. Yes, two boys. I have only Christine, and Corrosian's got her. I have to do what I'm told. You do see, don't you? It is time to go now. Come along, Roger West. And walk close beside me, please. Not far now. We are almost at the jetty. Yes, yes, yes. Lucifer, soon, my beauty. <laughs> he loves to ride in the launch. But you have not spoken a word ever since we left Mr. Morley. Are you always so silent, Roger West? Well, I'm thinking, yes. Share your thoughts. With your friend, Lucifer. With me? I doubt if your ears would be any more receptive. You are angry with yourself, is that it? For falling into Corrosian's trap. My mind was on someone else entirely, as it happened. Could it be by any chance a woman? And by every chance. My wife, if you must know. Oh, how disappointing of you. In my presence, men do not usually think about other women. Their wives, least of all. We are here. Get into the launch, please. Prager, start the motor. Go ahead, Roger West. Now, ladies first. Not in this instance. There he is. Come on, you chaps. Police? Sergeant Gill, what the devil? Keep them away, or I give Lucifer for the word. And Prager is armed. He will shoot. <laughs> stay where you are. If this fellow's got a gun, someone will get hurt. Do as I tell you and stay back. That's an order, Sergeant Gill. Into the launch now. Hurry. Come, Lucifer. Now, Prager. <laughs> Chadworth? Sergeant Gill here, sir. Well, Sergeant? It was a trap, all right, sir. But we were too late. Hello? Are you still there, sir? Yes, sir. I'm here. We came pretty close, sir. We're not close enough. No, sir. The inspector was taken aboard a motor cruiser and she put to sea at once. I don't know how I'm going to break the news to his wife. All right, Gill. Get back here as soon as you can. Goodbye. Yes, the guy. Miss Fordyce, tell Summers I want him with a car out in front in precisely five minutes. 
I warned him, you know, Janet, this habit of going off on his own and taking the bit between his teeth. Ticked him off about it only yesterday. Damn it, the very next minute, off he goes and falls for Corrosion's bait. No, Sir Guy, he didn't fall for it. He knew it was bait. Knew? Mm, yes, I realize it now. The way he talked before he went off this morning, when he, he said he didn't know how long this job would take. Yes, yes, he knew. Good Lord. He did it deliberately. He stepped into Corrosion's trap with his eyes wide open. Well, Miss Julietta, now what? Have you been growing bored, Roger West? Not a bit of it. Sitting inside a locked cabin is quite my favorite way of passing the time. But you might do something about the view from this porthole. You do not care for looking at the sea? A little of that goes a long way as far as I'm concerned. How far are we going, incidentally? Or shouldn't I ask? I think not. But I can relieve the monotony for you. I bring you an invitation to dinner. Invitation? Now, isn't that delightful? It almost sounds as though I were in a position to refuse. You have always the choice of a hunger strike, but I would advise against it. The food on board is prepared by the former chef of a four-star Paris restaurant. Shall we go? The dining saloon is this way. This door. Give me your opinion of the decor. Do you like the color scheme? I selected it. Pale green and gold. Very luxurious. And the table looks inviting. Do you not agree? There is nothing to show up silver so well as fine linen, I believe. And those bohemian goblets, too. I'm especially fond of them. I noticed the table's set for three. Oh, did I neglect to mention that we would not be dining alone? Who's making up the party? I am, Mr. West. Well, corrosion. Oh, pour a drink for all of us, Julietta, my dear. Not for me. Don't be churlish, Chief Inspector. Or were you offended that I wasn't present to welcome you aboard? But there are times in one's life, and this for me was such an occasion, when the anticipation of a pleasure is almost keener than the thing itself. That was my only reason for deferring the moment of our meeting. I am sure you will not begrudge it to me. I've been wanting to come face to face with you myself for quite a time. But not precisely in these circumstances, I imagine. However, we must not spoil what promises to be an excellent dinner with such disagreeable thoughts. Let us take our drinks to the table. Yours is the chair on my right, Chief Inspector, as befits the guest of honor. Let me fill your glass, Mr. West. I've had enough. But I insist... I have a toast to propose. To the end of a long history of inconvenience which you have caused for me. The wheel, as they say, has turned to my advantage. It might still have a twist left in it to mine. <laughs> you would be deluding yourself to rely on it. Have you enjoyed the meal? The food lived up to my recommendation, I hope. No complaints. But I have one. You make a poor dining companion, my friend. We have hardly heard a word from you. Uh, perhaps Mr. Michael Grant should have been invited to join us, Julietta. Though I doubt if his conversation would have proved any more enlivening. Grant? You mean he's here on board? He is. And his wife? Is this where you've been keeping the girl? No. She is safe elsewhere. But, as I have assured her husband, quite unharmed. Unharmed? After being thrown into a nightmare, terrorized out of her life, is that what you call unharmed? Young Grant, poor devil, going through half a dozen different grades of hell. You feel sorry for him? What's so remarkable about that? But he helped Corrosion to escape from you. Or did you not know that? Of course he knows it, Julieta. But as you see, the inspector is a man in whom the human sympathies run rampant. That's the last thing... You could be accused of, isn't it, Corrosion? You, you... Is something wrong, Chief Inspector? You don't look at all well. My head feels funny. Spinning. The food. Something in the food. 
Quite so. You... You... I just... A small added ingredient, Chief Inspector. You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the fourth part of Battle for Inspector West by John Creasy. Listen to Trail from a Tip-Off, the next episode of John Fawcett Wilson's production of Battle for Inspector West. We're up to part six of the battle for Inspector West. Calling Chief Inspector West. Calling Chief Inspector West. Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part 6. Explosion in Red. Tell me you will do it, Roger. Tell me you will kill Carosian for me. For both of us tonight. Now. Is that what brought you here, Julieta? In the middle of the night. Say you will do it. Say it. Now, quiet, quiet. Calm down. Someone might hear you. You can do it, Roger. You are not afraid of him like all the others. Even though you are his prisoner, you do not talk to him like a man who is afraid. And you walk into his trap deliberately. Julieta, calm down. I have unlocked your door. I'm giving you a chance. Carosian has made a fool of you. Escaped from you so many times. Now you can have your revenge. And I will help you to escape after you have killed him. Why do you want me to kill him, Julieta? I hate him. Hate him. And that's a sudden switch. He's a monster. Cold-blooded monster. He killed my dogs. You saw it? You were there. He ordered three of the Alsatians to be shot. And my Lucifer, the most beautiful of them all. He's done worse to people, Julieta. Oh, yes. Look at what he has done to me. Do you know what he has made of me? His experiment. He told me about it. He is proud of it. To have taken away all the feelings of a woman in me. The dogs were all that he left for me to love. Look at me, Roger. Tell me, has he destroyed me completely? Look at me and tell me, am I so different from other women? You're a lot more beautiful than most. You think I am attractive? Desirable? Hold me. Hold me in your arms, Roger. Ah, there now. Uh, It's all right, Julieta. Everything's all right. No. No, I am a woman. You must hold me as a man should hold a woman. But later, later, yes, after you have killed Corosian. Listen, Julieta. First, I have to know what his plans are, this ten million pound operation of his. Tell me about it, all the details. Oh, what does that matter? Once he's dead, there will be no operation. Come, come, I will show you his Uh, room. uh, Wait a minute, Uh, what about the guards? Oh, at night there's only one man on guard and he's downstairs by the front door. Come, Roger. What are you waiting for? Why do you hesitate? Because I don't take the law into my own hands. I'm a policeman. My job is to bring Corrosion to justice. You do not intend to kill him? No, Julieta. But you must. You will. Or you will die yourself. I have only to scream. The man from downstairs will come running. And Corrosion will come too. And you will die. One scream for me. I'll apologize for this in advance. Sorry, Julieta. (laughs) Very sorry. Now, onto the bed. That's it. A gag to keep you quiet. Just one man, you said, at the front door. Now, if I can get down the stairs without him spotting me. He 
fingers nodded off. Softly, huh? Oh, damn. Let's put you to sleep properly. <clears throat> now, the door. Not a sign of a patrol. No dogs. Here goes. <laughs> Make a dash for the wall. There he goes. Get him, boy. Get him. Got him in one. This way, Inspector. Gil. Over here, into the trees. Gil, what the place is... Surprised to see me, sir. Oh, damn glad to see you. Let's get out of here. That shot will bring the guards. Should the guards are here already? Well, who the... This is Superintendent Maloon, sir, of the Civic Guard. I'm pumped to know you, Inspector West, even though you've lost us the glory of rescuing you. Yes, Civic Guard? You mean I'm in... I'm in Ireland? But of course you are. Didn't you know it? Well, here they come. Corosian's men. Aye, and we've some of our own to meet them. All right, three boys. This is what we're waiting for. Come on, let's be having <laughs> Well, what's the tally, Sergeant Gill? Two Corrosian men wounded, ten captured, most of the Alsatians done for. Uh, With only three casualties on our side, Inspector West, and them hardly worth the mention. (laughs) How about you, sir? Are you okay? I never felt better, Hugh, but that was one scrap I really enjoyed. I could (laughs) see your heart was in it. I'll be saying, Patrick, that's what I call a fine hearty night's work. Uh, And it's not over yet, Superintendent. Now we take the house, and this time we get Corrosian once and for all. Well, come on. Let's gather the troops. Hold your horses. Hold your horses, Chief Inspector. I have a feeling you're going to be disappointed. Listen, do you hear what I'm hearing? Superintendent! You remember what I told you, Sergeant Gill, about the private aircraft at Canada? And there it goes, rising up above the trees, with the little lights of it winking and carrying Mr. Corrosian off away from Canada. Blast him. Every time, just when I'm within an ace of... So we might as well pack it in, eh, sir? No point in raiding the house now. Isn't there? Corrosian's scarfed in a hell of a hurry, Sergeant. If he's left any documents behind, any of his records... The devil. That was in the house. It's on fire. And will you look at it? Yes, I'm looking. A blazing inferno, so it is. Or we'll not have a chance of getting in there, Chief Inspector. And as for your hopes of finding any papers... That's right. Corrosian's taken care of that, too. He's thought of everything, hasn't he? Every single damn thing. Better fasten your seatbelt, sir. Hmm? Uh, what's that, Hubert? Your seatbelt, sir, will be landing any minute. Sir. Uh, well, you won't be sorry to step out on London Airport, eh, sir? I'd be a lot happier if we had Corrosion with us in handcuffs. Yes, sir, it was bad luck. The only kind I seem to have where he's concerned. Well, at least you're out of his hands. Thanks to you. I shan't forget it, Hubert. Well, not me, sir. All I did was to follow Jacko Dempster. Too bad he didn't get Corrosion as he planned instead of getting a bullet himself. Would have saved everyone a hell of a lot of bother. Ah, well, here we go. Hubert, you didn't tell me how you got on to Jacko Dempster in the first place. Constable, red light. Sorry, Sorry, Inspector. Watch it in future. Traffic lights are meant for police cars too, you know. Even if they are on special duty... I must say, it was decent of Chatworth to send a car to the airport for us. Eh, he's not a bad old stick at times, Arthur Guy, I have to admit. Well, I'm sure the assistant commissioner will appreciate your commendation. You were asking about Jacko Dempster, sir. Yes, what put you on to him? Well, a tip-off, actually. From an old friend of yours, in fact. Pearlie Willis. Uh, Pearlie? He called you. Oh, is that likely? Everyone knows you're the only copper at the yard Pearlie ever has any truck with. No, we got his information through your wife. He contacted Janet, did he? A crafty old so-and-so. Uh, Chief Inspector, mm. about Mrs. West. Well, she's all right, isn't she? Uh, nothing wrong. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, she's fine. Huh. That's really what I wanted to say. 
I've been inclined to think a policeman shouldn't get married, you know. Well, too tough on the woman and all that. But I've rather changed my mind. Because of Janet? Yes, sir. You know, these last few days haven't been any fun for her. But she's taken it all damn well. Yeah, she usually manages to. There aren't many like Janet around. And if that sounds to you like a clear-cut case of prejudice, Hubert, my lad, you're dead right. Mm -hmm. uh, Constable, the next turn after the pub, it's a shorter way into Bell Street. Yes, sir. And uh, don't take me right up to the door. I'd like to walk to the house, so just drop me at the corner. Hmm? What's wrong? Oh, at this moment, not a thing, Jan. Not a thing in the world. Go back to sleep. What's the matter? Can't you sleep? Oh, I'm just happy to lie here. Listen to the sounds of the night. Well, I'm not all that sleepy myself. Um, Roger? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Now, come on. What were you going to say? Well, I suppose you wouldn't... You wouldn't think of asking the guy to... To take me off the case. Give it to someone else. Never forget I spoke, darling. It's just me wishing for the moon. Oh, Jan, I can't give it up now. I've got to follow it through all the way. I've got to find out what Corrosion's scheme is. And the means of stopping him. But what chance have you got? You deliberately put yourself at his mercy to try to find out, but how much further did it get you? A little, I think. I've known he was hatching something big all along. Now, I know just how big. And he's lost Canara, his headquarters. We could just have him on the run. But he'll be all the more dangerous because of it with more reason to hate you than ever. Well, let's not lose any sleep about that. <gasps> no, in fact, let's not lose any more sleep. I'm in for a long session with Chatworth in the morning, so... Uh, where's the ashtray? Oh. Uh, hmm. Good night, Janet Carr. Mm. Oh, thank heavens you're home. Night, darling. Miss Fordyce? Yes, sir, Guy? Uh, no calls, please, while Chief Inspector West is with me. Sit down, Roger. Uh, thank you, sir. I had it in mind, as you may possibly imagine, to tear you off a strip for taking off on that solo crime-breaking act of yours. But in view of the general rejoicing at your return, I've decided to forego it. <clears throat> it's good to have you back, Roger. Oh, nice of you to say so, sir. You're also back in your usual high favor with the gentlemen of the press. I suppose you've seen the papers, the Canara stories on all the front pages. Oh, well, the way it reads, you'd think we'd scotch corrosion for good and all. But we're still a long way from that desirable objective. Mm. Well... Let's have your report. From the moment you took it upon yourself to stick your head into his noose. Right from the beginning, Chief Inspector, if you please. So, that's it, sir. That brings you right up to date. The men we captured at Canara are due to arrive in England today. They'll be questioned, naturally. But uh, I don't think they'll have anything of real value to tell us. Small fry, only, mm. eh? Hmm. So we're no nearer to knowing Corrosion's game, except that he has his sights on a ten million pound target. And I've been racking my brains about that from the moment he told me. I'm damned if I can fathom out what it could be. I'm worried, sir. I've got to admit it. Because you think he's going to pull it off? Also because he'll be more vicious now, more cold-blooded than ever. Or oh, even Janet could see that. Oh, incidentally, I noticed when I left home that you'd got a man on guard at Bell Street. Yes, two of them. Front and back. Thought it might be as well. I'm grateful, sir. I'd like them kept on for a while, if you've no objection. Of course, sir. Now, about Corrosion, all we seem to have in the way of a clue are these red discs you mentioned. Hmm? They're a kind of identification for his men. Each one has a number on it. I was with Corrosion when he hauled a man over the coals for losing one. They're obviously an integral part of the operation. Detective Sergeant Gill's putting out orders to hold any man seen with one for questioning. Yes, very good. Sir, what about the Grant couple? Oh, yes. You're quite convinced that uh, kidnapping Christine Grant was just a blind. Oh, Corrosion is as good as admitted it to me. Do we know where Michael Grant and his wife are at this moment, sir? Certainly we do. Here in London, at his flat in Belgrave Square. What? But I've managed to keep that out of the papers for the moment. However, I've had Grant questioned. The report should be on your desk. Have you seen it yourself, sir? Naturally. Anything there to help at all? Doesn't seem so. Young Grant's story coincides with what you were told by the Julietta woman. Grant states that he and his wife were allowed to go because he'd done all the corrosion required of him. Mm. 
By that same token, Grant's father-in-law should have been left alone as well. Arthur Morley. Mm. Or apparently he has been. According to the man watching Morley, he's made no more unusual moves since he helped to play decoy to get you. You know, I've still half a mind to pull him in for that. I think we'd get a conviction, sir. Morley would make a pretty sympathetic figure in the dock, murderer or not. He's served his time. And he was acting under pressure from Corrosion for the sake of his daughter. Quite, quite. By the way, um, that woman of Corrosion's, uh, Julietta, what became of her? Any idea? I'm afraid not. I left her gagged and unconscious, as I told you, and... Um, Canara went up in flames. A blazing inferno, to quote the good Superintendent Balloon. You think Corrosion just abandoned her there? I wouldn't put it past him. Another victim, in more ways than one. It's, uh, It's hard not to feel sorry for her, you know. But what I really need is a lead on where Corrosion's gone to ground. Yes, come in. Ah, Julietta. Prager said you wished to see me. And you come promptly, like the obedient, loyal creature you are. Corrosion? A loyalty which suffered a small lapse, however, back in Kinara. But we will not discuss that for the moment. Uh, Join me here at the window, if you'd be so kind. Very well. An interesting view, don't you think? The busy dockyard scene. Uh, Possibly not as inviting to the eye as Kinara's green lawns and spreading oaks, but a more convenient pied-à-terre, perhaps. Quite safe, at least, from Chief Inspector West, wouldn't you agree? He will search hard for you. (laughs) I very much doubt if it would occur to him to search above a shabby warehouse overlooking Limehouse Reach. In any event, time is in my favor. What do you mean? Look below you. The freighter is at the wharf. It docked early this morning. The Snow Queen. (laughs) Not the most fitting name for such a battered ancient vessel, but hardly likely to arouse suspicion purely on that account. Rosie, and you propose to go ahead? Certainly. The first instructions have already been issued. But are you crazy? You must have seen the newspapers. They are full of the disaster at Kanara. The papers give the impression that you have taken flight. Do you think all your people will still feel sure of you? Each one will be thinking of himself, of his own skin. Is that what you are thinking of, Julietta? I? You make me wonder, my dear. I had intended to forget what happened at Kinara because I thought I understood the reasons for it. I put it down to the unfortunate mishap to your dogs, so much the objects of your affection. I believe that for a short time you were not yourself. What is myself? The Julietta I made of you. But for that, you would have been left to burn with the house. I'm beginning to ask myself, however, whether I could have been mistaken... If it was something more than the death of your Alsatians. I loved them. They were all you allowed me to love. Even that was an error, it seems. It was something more, wasn't it? Not the dogs, but a man. A man named Roger West. You... You're lying. Ah! You've never lied to me before. And you know how I dislike it. Oh! I want the truth, Julietta. West was the real reason. The first man to stir you, to make your heart beat faster. Oh, you're hurting me. I want the truth. Yes. Very well, yes, yes, I was satisfied to be what you made me. No more than a mind in a beautiful body. Until West came. I watched him with you and I heard him. And I saw what a man could be with strength and courage. and Other things, too, things that, things that are kind and warm and good. All the things you took away in me and taught me to despise. You didn't learn the lessons well enough, apparently. Are you learning now? I think that will be enough. There's still a lesson you have to learn. That for all the qualities you find to admire in Roger West, against a man like me, he can do nothing. You must be allowed the opportunity to witness that for yourself. Chief Inspector West's office, Detective Sergeant Gill speaking. Yes, he is. Uh, One moment, Inspector. It's QR division, sir. Inspector Weimer. Oh, right. Hello, Jack. What can I... Hmm? Well, thanks very much. So sure, I'm glad to be back. I'm up to my ears in bump. How's everything south of the river? Huh? Is that so? You bet I'm interested. 
Have your boys keep tabs on them as much as possible, will you? Right, bye. The rats seem to be creeping out of their holes. Pardon, sir? Jack Weimer's chaps have noticed quite a number of Corrosion's one-time associates back in their old haunts. And there appear to be some new faces floating around as well. Uh, Chief Inspector West. Uh, yes, hold on. For you, Hubert. Sergeant Norris. Oh, I know what he wants. Hello, Pete. Uh, look, we'd better scrub lunch today. Now, I'm all tied up. Reports. We'll be at it for quite a while, that's certain. We'll make it some other time, eh? Okay, bye. One saving grace, Hubert. Reading reports is a lot less of a chore than having to write them. Too true, sir. Hmm. <laughs> a heartfelt reply, if I ever heard one. Well, just to cheer you up, my lad, remember, you've got years of typist cramp ahead of you. Oh, thank you, sir. I thought I was joining the force to chase villains. Uh, catching them's more to the point. And it's a hell of a sight easier said than done, especially when it comes to the big ones like our friend Corrosion. If I just had even the vaguest idea of... Mm. Well, let's get on with the issue, shall we? Yes. Report on our VIPs. Uh, there are only two of them, I see. Sir Arnold Downer and Lord Riversley. What about the one on Laszlo Barai? No, there isn't one, sir. He's still in Oslo. But the Six Nations Economic Conference uh, finishes there today. He's due to fly back to London tomorrow. Hmm. Well, these two don't seem to have been up to anything out of the ordinary while I've been away. No, sir. And about the nearest thing I can find here to a startling development is the fact that Lord Riversley has hired himself a new chauffeur. Hmm. Could be Chatworth was right, and I am barking up the wrong tree here. I suppose you can't know for certain the paper you found their names on had anything to do with Corrosion, can you? It has nothing to do with knowing for certain, Sergeant. You get a feeling. Call it a copper's instinct. Hmm. All right. What have we got next? Uh, the latest report from the man on Arthur Morley. Nothing suspicious there from what Chapworth told me. That's right. Next one, then. Uh, this is the report of the interview with Michael Grant. Hubert, what's Arthur Morley do with himself all day? Oh, very little. He's got a room off the East India Dock Road, takes a walk most mornings, has lunch every day in a small calf not far from his room, does a bit of painting in the afternoons. Hmm. Done anything about getting himself a job? Not so far. Doubt if I would myself after spending 13 years in the nick for murder. Has there been any contact between him and the Grunts since they came back to London? No, sir, nothing like that. So more than likely, he doesn't even know that... What's time? Uh, just on half past twelve, sir. Right, so we'll knock off for lunch. Knock off? Now? But I was sure we'd you be... You can tell your friend, Sergeant Norris, you'll be able to lunch with him after all. But before you grab that phone, give me the address of that cafe Morley goes to, would you? Is anyone sitting here? No, it's quite free. Inspector West. Mind if I join you, Morley? What are you doing here? Oh, just happened to be round this way, fancied a cup of tea, and this place looked as good as any. It's a small world, as they always say. You've been having me followed, isn't that it? What makes you think that? What's it going to be for you, Dex? Uh, uh just tea, thanks. Right here. One tea, rising. Inspector. Yes? I've seen the papers. I... I'd just like to say that I'm glad you got away from Corrosion. It was a great relief to me. I felt responsible for my pardons all. But I had no choice. Morley, you've heard nothing more from him. No, no, nothing. Not even to tell you that he's let your daughter go? Is that true? Yes, she and Grant were set free. Inspector, what is this? Are you trying to trick me for some reason or other? No, why should I? You don't seem to believe what I'm telling you, Morley. There was nothing about it in the papers. Well, the information is not being released for the present. But Christine's safe with her husband. They're here in London, in his flat at this moment. It's good of you to tell me, Inspector. Thought you'd want to know, that's all. Yes, thank you. Are you proposing to see her? Oh, no, certainly not. I, I don't want to spoil things for her anymore. I did enough damage when I... when I killed her mother... Now it's more than sufficient for me to know that she's safe and happy. That's all I want. Here you are, Dax. Auntie. Oh, here. Never mind the change. Follow. Time I was going. Bye, Morley. Yeah, what about your tea? Of course. Some people have got money to think about, haven't they? Let's go back by way of the embankment, uh, Constable. <laughs> Drive past the old headquarters, huh? Uh... Slow down. 
Constable, I said slow down. Can't be done, sir. Not in this traffic. Then uh, turn around, first chance you get, and drive back to that last intersection. Well, something wrong, Inspector? Spotted a pair of faces in the crowd. I want a second look. Uh, there's your chance now. Round you go. I'm making no mistake, Inspector. I saw them myself. Yes, in your manner. The Cotter brothers. Have your chaps keep their eyes peeled. Right, bye. What's the concern about these characters, sir? Two good reasons, Sergeant. Lanky Cotter and his brother run the toughest mob of villains in the north of England. And the most interesting thing about the Cotter boys is that they've never been known to move south of the Mersey. Get that, will you? Right. Chief Inspector West's office, Detective Sergeant Gill speaking. Yes, hold on a minute. For you, sir. Who is it? No name, sir, but there's no mistaking that voice. It's Pearly Willis. Oh, give me that phone. Pearly, I've been hoping I'd hear from you. I'm in your debt, me old son. If you hadn't given my wife that tip-off about Jack O'Dempster, I might not be here at this moment. Huh? There's something else for me right far away. I'm all ears. What? Yes, yes, I spotted a couple of myself, the Cotter boys. Now, go on. From all over, huh? Have you any idea? What was that? What color? Red. I keep talking, Pearlie. I'm listening to every word. Well, Sergeant? That was the last of the divisional headquarters, sir. Superintendent Goff. What did you get from him? The same story? Same story. How about you, sir? I've made half a dozen calls, and there's not much room for doubt, Hubert. What Pearlie Willis told me was right. Not that I've ever known him wrong. Pearl of great wisdom, you might say. Hold the fort, Sergeant. I'm taking all this to Chatworth. Roger, are you absolutely certain of this? Yes, sir. It all adds up. Sergeant Gills checked with all the divisions. I've talked to the police in six major cities. Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, Liverpool, Hull, Cardiff. And they confirm Pearlie Willis's information? They do, sir. There's no question of it. The villains are converging on London from all over the country. Deviators, tea leaves and tearaways. From the top boys like the Cotters down to the small-time Mug Charlies. They've been coming in since early this morning and they're still coming. And the red discs? The place is flooded with them, according to Pearlie. This is it, sir. It's got to be. The build-up for Corrosion's ten million pound caper. And now we know what it is. It can't be anything else. A full-scale Huns, Goths and Vandals operation, modern style. Sack, pillage, and plunder. The target? London. Our story continues at... Calling Chief Inspector West. Calling Chief Inspector West. Stand by for West. A Crime File, based on John Creasy's novel, Battle for Inspector West. Dramatized for radio by Morris Travers. Battle for Inspector West, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard, and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part 7, Mastermind at Midnight. eggs and the almond essence. Oh, who's that? Oh, Roger, darling, how you startled me. Did I? Mm. Jan, I've told you to keep the back door locked when you're alone in the house at night. Well, I must have forgotten I went out to enter the tidy bin, but why on earth have you come in the back way? I saw the kitchen light on. What are you up to in here at this hour? I'm making a cake. As those sharp eyes of yours should tell you, Chief Inspector. Oh, at this time of night, it's after 10.30. Oh, it's the best time for trying out a new recipe with the boys in bed and all peaceful. <laughs> we bred a pair of young wolves. Did you know the way Martin and Richard go through a cake? Um, we'll spoil those two. Does that radio have to be so loud? No, of course not. It needn't be on at all now that you're home. Not to stay, Jan. I'll need it back at the yard. All hell's going to break loose any time now. Is it Corrosion? No one else but... Mr. Mastermind himself. We finally got on to what he's been planning all this time. What is it? 
It's a wholesale invasion, John, by criminals from all over England. They've been swarming in since this morning, villains of every shape, size, and description. At this moment, I'd say the crooked characters outnumber the police. The place is crawling with them. That's Corrosion's big scheme, John. To ransack London. What? Now, when the balloon goes up, there won't be much we can do to stop him. Because we found it out too late. Campaign at midnight. The operation is about to be launched. And we must drink to it, my dear Julietta. I do not care for champagne, Corrosion. You know that. For once, you must make an exception to your rule. I insist, my dear. I'm sure you won't refuse me. Very well. One might, I confess, have wished for surroundings somewhat more appropriate to the occasion than the side words. However, your glass, my dear. Thank you. I give you the 24 hours to come. Phase one of the operation is about to be initiated. For the rest of tonight and the whole of tomorrow, it will intensify. And the police will be powerless to stop it. And after that, phase two. Precisely. At the end of which, by next midnight, with the high tide, the Snow Queen will sail from the wharf below us. I promised you should judge for yourself, Julietta, which is the better man. Chief Inspector Roger West or Corrosion. The day ahead will provide you with the opportunity to find out. Here, who's that? Only me, Mrs. Lowry. And who's me? Oh, Mr. Bowley, you just come in. As a matter of fact, I'm just going out, Mrs. Lowry. Ah. I thought I'd take a breath of fresh air. It's rather close in my room tonight. Oh, well, you wouldn't get me wandering around the streets at midnight. You be careful now, Mr. Morley. Oh, I doubt if anything very alarming is likely to happen to me on a little stroll. Good night, Mrs. Lowry. Oh, want me to get it, sir? No, I'll take it. Chatworth? Sergeant Gill? Yes? What? Roger. Is this it, sir? Pad and pencil, quickly. Here. Right, uh, give me the details, Sergeant. A bank broken into in Allgate... Raid on a gaming club, Barclay Square. Two burglaries, where? Roger, get that other phone. Mm. Uh, West, yes, sir. Go on, Sergeant Gill. No, uh, GS Division, uh, yes, Inspector. Burglaries, Knightsbridge. Smash and grab, sir. How many, Inspector? Anything more, Sergeant? Three of them. Very well. And what else, Inspector? Two lorries hijacked, right. Thanks for letting us know. Well, Roger, this is it, right enough. Corrosion's ten million pound killing underway. Yeah, Jan, Roger. Yeah. Oh, Roger, I've been listening to the early morning news. It's, it's unbelievable. Bulletins were being handed to the announcer one after the other. Yeah, it's crime with the lid off, Jan, and it hasn't stopped all night. They've hit everything, and in a dozen different places at once. Diamond merchants in Hatton Garden, warehouses full of furs, nightclubs, private houses. It's staggering. Oh, did you hear the emergency bulletin about keeping all the kids at home for the day? Yes, yes, I did. There have been no complaints from our two. Well, I thought you might have missed it. That's why I'm phoning. Oh, and Jan, I don't want you to move out of the house either. Understand? Stay indoors with Scoopy and Fish. Well, I uh, have to hang up now. Bye, love. I thought you'd better know this, Roger. I've called off the men you had watching those bigwigs of yours. Well, call them off, sir. That's what I said. There's been no sign of any suspicious behavior by Sir Arnold Darnall or Lord Riversley. As for the third one, the uh, government economic advisor fellow... Laszlo Baray. Yes, you can forget about putting a man on him, too. But I've already deputed a man out to London Airport to shadow Baraya as soon as he flies back from the Oslo Conference. Then you can damn well depute him back. Those three may have been part of some list of Corrosians, but with the situation as it is, that's become irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. Look, but sir, and I... And that goes for the man tailing Arthur Morley, too. There may have been some point in it while Morley's daughter was in Corrosian's hands, but Christine Grant has been set free. She's safe. And we're up against the biggest thing in crime waves London has ever experienced. The force is understaffed, stretched to the limit. And we need every available man. Then why keep me pinned to my desk, sir? At a damn sight sooner, be out with the squad cars and... You're more valuable where you are, Chief Inspector. I want you checking every report, every item of information. Think of yourself as a human computer, if you like. Maybe if enough information is fed to you, you'll come up with the one fact we need more than any other. Where Corrosion has got to. There is still no sign of any decrease in the crime wave which has overwhelmed London. Robbery and violence are continuing all over the city. Within the last hour, there's been news of an outbreak in Regent Street, 
A bank, a jeweler's shop, and a department store were raided almost simultaneously. And there is news of two more payroll robberies. Well, my dear, what do you say now? I have London in turmoil. The police, and that includes Inspector West, don't know which way to turn. It certainly seems so, Corrosian. You were afraid that the loss of our Canara headquarters would shake the confidence of all those concerned. But you see, Julieta, that greed can be an even stronger force than fear. The entire operation, phases one and two, will proceed exactly as planned. And what of me, Corrosian? What are your plans for me? For the moment, they are in abeyance. What does that mean? In spite of my displeasure with you yesterday, you may have noticed that I have not questioned you further as to what happened between you and Roger West for his escape from Canara. Yes, I have noticed. And perhaps you wondered what has made me refrain from doing so. It would appear that I have a small chink in my armor. And it is you, my dear Julietta. I find myself wanting to believe that everything including the feelings you admitted for West, stem merely from a temporary unbalance. I'm hoping to see you once more as the Julietta I have known, the woman I molded, with beauty and intelligence, but with a mind untrammeled by the commonplace emotions of commonplace creatures. Corrosian... We I... shall not discuss it further for the time being. But later, when the second phase of the operation is completed... And before the Snow Queen catches the midnight tide, then, my dear, we shall settle the matter once and for all. Here we are, sir, the latest batch of reports. Well, if they keep coming in at this rate, this office won't be big enough to hold them. They're dead right, sir. Do you mind not looking so damn cheerful about it, Sergeant? I don't feel cheerful. The villains have really got the bit between their teeth. Strong rooms, safe deposits, shops, stores, restaurants... You think there was no such thing as a copper in London? Mm, Corrosion's not letting up for a minute. And there's precious little to show on our side of the ledger. We have made some arrests, sir. Exactly 23 at the last count. All of them carrying Corrosion's red identity discs. But it's just a drop in the bucket, Hubert. Well, let's see these reports. Uh, Look at this one first, sir. It's about Arthur Morley. Morley, show me. Mm. Who's this, Mrs. Larry? She's his landlady, sir. It seems Morley went out for some fresh air last night. At midnight, she said, and he hasn't come back. She got worried after listening to the news and phoned the yard. What have you done about him? Well, nothing yet, sir. I thought I'd better wait for you. Um, we'll put out a general call on him, Sergeant. Don't know what the chances are with all this commotion that's going on, but you never can tell. The Chief Inspector West. Chatworth, get up here, Roger. Uh, what's happened, sir? This one's right out of the blue. It's Lord Riversley. He's disappeared. Be right with you, sir. It appears that Riversley had a luncheon engagement. He went off in his car. It was found on Hampstead Heath. Minus his lordship and the chauffeur. All that was found on the floor under the driver's seat was a small red disc. A corrosion identity disc. Oh, damn and blasted. It was in the last report I saw it with my own eyes that Riversley had hired a new chauffeur. Oh, it never occurred to me for a minute that he might be a corrosion man. I don't blame yourself, Roger. If anyone's responsible, it's me. I made the decision to call off the man you had watching Riversley and the other two. The others... Dana and Barai. Check on them. Get on that phone, Chief Inspector. You check on Dana, I'll do the other one. And let's not waste a minute. Well, Roger? At 10.45 this morning, Sir Arnold Dana left the Dana Industries building for a business appointment. He didn't keep it and he didn't come back. No one has any idea where he's got to. Hmm. What about Laszlo Barai, sir? Barai arrived at London Airport from Oslo on schedule. He was due to go straight to the offices of the Ministry for National Expansion. But he didn't turn up either. Exactly. They've also checked at his home. No sign of him there. Oh, Corrosion's grabbed the three of them. And there'll be more of the same to come. You're thinking of that list? Yes, sir, I am. Riversley, Dana, Barai, they were just the names at the head of it. The hell of it is, we've no idea what others are on it or how many there are. But one thing's certain. This is Corrosion's real target. Kidnapping on a vast scale. That's right. With this whole crime wave thing as a smokescreen. A typical piece of Corrosion conjuring. One huge exercise in, in misdirection. He keeps us running round in circles while he snaps up his real victims. By the look of it, he's going to pull it off. I guess that Christine Grant's kidnapping was some kind of cover-up, but I didn't guess it was a rehearsal as well. I want to talk to the Grants, sir. For what reason, particularly? Oh, it's been nagging at me ever since I saw them being driven out of Corrosian's headquarters. What has? Why Corrosian let them go at all? Why he let... Confounded, man. You've seen young Grant's statement. It's all there. 
He did what Corosian told him, so he So was... he was allowed to take his wife away just like that. Reward for services rendered? Well... Does that read like Corosian to you? He unleashes a raging horde of criminals on London with no compunction whatever. But when it comes to Michael and Christine Grant, he just waves them bye-bye. Because they've been a good little boy and girl. No, 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 no. That just doesn't gel with me, sir. I want a few words with Mr. and Mrs. Grant. And this is as good a time for it as any. West, I thought we were all through with the police. You've got my statement at the yard. I'll not have the thing raked over and over. All I want now is for Chris to forget the whole ghastly business. Yes, I can understand that. Can you? I doubt it. If you'd seen her as I did oh, last Michael, night, please. waking up from a nightmare, half terrified, reliving it all from the very first day of what should have been our honeymoon. The last thing I want is to distress you or your wife, Grant. But I think I'm entitled to expect cooperation from you more than anyone. I know what you're thinking of. The way I let Corrosion get away from you out of my father's house and how I've done whatever he told me ever since. Do you imagine I've enjoyed it? I did it all for Chris. And if I had to do it all over again, I would. I'm not concerned with that any longer. Then what is it you want from us, Mr. West? Uh, well, to be honest with you, Mrs. Grant, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm just hoping for something to give me a lead to Corrosion's new hideout. Corrosion's your problem. It's nothing to do with Chris or me any longer. Nothing to do with you. Do you think you're living on a desert island? Outside this fine luxury flat of yours, London's in chaos, or hadn't you heard? While we stand here, people are being robbed, injured, some of them killed. Others are disappearing, just as your wife did. All that is Corrosian's work. If I can find him, there might be some hope of putting an end to it. Oh, Michael is right. You know he is. Look, there's just nothing more to tell him. Everything's in my statement. Look, there, there might be something you've forgotten. Some little thing. Try and think. No, there's nothing. Did Corrosian tell you he was allowing you to take Christine away, or, or were you just drugged and put in the car? No, he told us right enough, didn't he, Chris? That's what I don't get. Why go to all the trouble? Drugging you, having you sent all the way back from Ireland, when he could simply have had you killed. I think he was persuaded against it, Mr. West. Persuaded? How do you mean? Well, he implied that, more or less. Well, that's how it seemed to me, anyway. What are you talking about, Chris? Oh, don't you remember, darling? Wait a minute. Yes, there was something... One of those oblique remarks of his. Well, what was it? I can't remember the exact words. Something to the effect that we should be grateful for influence that had been exerted on our behalf. Influence by whom? I thought perhaps he meant the woman who was always with him. Oh, Julietta. I can't see her influencing Corrosion. Well, the other way round, I'd have thought. Yes, quite true. Well, I don't know that this gets me any forwarder, but it's certainly something new to think over. I'll uh, say goodbye now and... Oh, good luck to both of you. Uh, no, don't bother to show me out so I can find a way. Hello, Hubert. Oh, you're back, sir. Mm. Any luck with the grants? Not what you'd call luck. What's been going on here? Oh, I'm having the crime of my life, sir. Oh, that's nice for you. Well, look here, sir. Another mm. half dozen disappearing tricks. What, six more of them? Making a total of 14 up to date. And just cast your eye over the names in this lot. Mm. Well, here's the well-known MP, and this is one of England's richest art dealers. And two more big industrialists, and one of our millionaire playboys. But who's this, Henry Kimber? I uh, won 250,000 quid on the football pools three months ago, sir. Don't you remember? Um, they're all either well-known or wealthy or both. And what are all these? More of the crime wave reports? Yes, sir. It's not easing up one bit, is it? No, sir. One stroke of luck, though, considering the general panic. No? Uh, the call we put out for Arthur Morley, sir. He's been traced? Well, a constable down Limehouse Way spotted him working in a warehouse by the river. Simleys, it's called. Simleys, Simleys. Yes, I know it. They're general shipping merchants. Not a very big concern, but they have their own wharf and warehouse on Limehouse Reach. Well, according to the constable, it seems Morley strolled that way last night. Uh, saw the place was busy loading a freighter and got himself a temporary storeman's yeah. job. Started straight away, which is why he didn't go back to his lodgings. Uh, I see. Well, that's that then. Now, let's see what we've got here. Uh, Chief Inspector West. Yes, go ahead. Two more. Yes, I'll take the names. Uh, Scott Valens. Mm. Uh, thanks, bye. Another two men who've been reported missing. General Sir William Scott Valens and uh, Viscount Derringham. Corrosion's building up a pretty healthy ransom collection, isn't he? And there's not a damn thing we're able to do about it. I thought I knew what frustration meant, Sergeant. But I didn't know the half of it until now. Julietta. I'm here, Corrosian, by the rail. The moment has come, my dear. In less than an hour, it will be midnight. 
The tide will be high and this vessel will put to sea. To carry its special cargo out of the country. Quite so. The question, however, is whether it will also carry you, my dear. Corrosian, I... But if you are to sail with me in the Snow Queen, it must be only as the Julietta I created, my Julietta. Understand that clearly. I do. Then I should like to hear your decision. I come with you, Corrosian. You're certain, Julietta? I'm certain. Whatever feelings I may have believed I had for Roger West no longer exist, if they ever really existed. You were right, Corrosian. It was no more than a temporary disturbance, as you said. I'm happy to hear it. In any case, you have now proved yourself his master. And mine. You have outmatched him. Once and forever. West is a good policeman. Astute and intuitive. But all his astuteness cannot tell him that similes really belongs to me. And his intuition can hardly stretch to 40 marked crates in a hold of the Snow Queen, which contain 40 unconscious men. The men he is searching for. Here, under our feet, my dear. Say that again, Roger. How many? 40 of them, sir. That's the total to date. It's been going on the whole day, but of course most of them weren't missed till early evening. For the past four hours, the names have been coming in with a rush. Society, big business, politicians... Corosian's just taken his pick. What's got me at a loss is where the hell he can keep so many men hidden. He's going to get away with it, Roger. By all the signs and portents, clear away with it. I'm damned if he is, sir. I'll find him somehow. I know there's, there's something, something at the back of my mind, some hint. I just can't seem to get hold of it. Well, keep trying. Try like the devil. I'll leave you to it. Right, sir. Uh, something. Like a, a word that's on the tip of the tongue. I beg your pardon, sir? Mm. Oh, talking to myself, Hubert. Toss over the cigarettes, will you? Right. Thanks. Where's you? Roger, it's me. Oh, Jan. I, I just had to phone you before I went to bed. I haven't heard from you since the first thing this morning. Well, I haven't had a minute, Jan. Are you all right? Yes, I'll live. Oh, you must be dead on your feet. It's after 11. You've had no sleep for nearly 40 hours. Oh, I'm not the only one. We're all walking zombies at the yard right now. Oh, um, everything okay at home? Well, quiet now, but mm. it's been hectic with the boys inside the house all day. <laughs> oh, those two have so much energy, they make me feel decrepit. <laughs> I must say, I couldn't help wishing for a good strong dose of father's <laughs> influence around the place. What did you say? I said her father's influence was just what's... That's it. Hmm? Janet, my girl, bless you. Uh, 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 can't talk anymore now. Um, you go to bed in sweet dreams. Bye. Influence, of course. Uh, Chief Inspector West, put me through to the Assistant Commissioner and make it quick. Yes, Chief Inspector. Sergeant Gill? Yes, sir? I've got a job for you. Chatworth? Uh, Roger West, sir, uh, mind hanging on a minute. Uh, Hubert, that freighter loading at Simley's Wharf. I want to know what time it's due to sail. Get cracking. Right, sir. What's all that about, Roger? I've got it, sir. The answer. Now I know why Corrosion let the grants go. Where he's got his kidnapped victims and where he is himself at this moment. How long till we sail, Corrosion? Only another 30 minutes, my dear. I wish it were now, this moment. There's no need for nervousness, Julietta. Nothing can stop us. No, of course not. Ten million pounds. Corrosion, are you sure it will be paid and safely? Of course. Not one of our passengers will be released until the total of the various ransoms has been lodged in Switzerland in the special numbered bank account. And all the proceeds from the crime wave? Oh, no, my dear. That is the reward for all those who contributed to it and so enabled us to collect our cargo. It has all run so smoothly. Your operation has been a complete success. Not his alone, Miss Julietta. Who's there? Good evening. Morley. Arthur Morley. Why are you here? For the best reason in the world, my dear young lady. I am the one who designed the whole operation. You? Arthur Morley? Yes, Hubert. 
working in with corrosion all the time? Make that one assumption and everything else adds up, Sergeant. Why corrosion let Christine Grant and her husband go free? Because her father used his influence. The one thing Morley genuinely cares for is his daughter. But if he's in league with Corrosian, he must have agreed to having her kidnapped. I'd say Corrosian pulled that one off his own bat, and Morley had to play along. And all his go-between activities only helped to throw suspicion off him. So you think that Morley suddenly taking this job means that Corrosian's at Simley's Wharf? Yeah, my bet is that Corrosian owns it, just as he owned Canara. And can you think of a better place to stow 40 kidnapped men than in a freighter due to sail at midnight? What time is it now? Just after 11.30, sir. Constable, keep your foot down. Let's just hope the other cars and the river police get there in time. Keep your fingers crossed, Hubert. Oh, yes, Miss Julietta. It was all my idea. You see, Corrosian and I have been associated for a very long time. Why did you never tell me, Corrosian? I saw no need for it, my dear. Indeed, our association was the real reason for my wife's unfortunate death, you know. Everyone believed I killed her out of jealousy. In fact, it was because she'd found out that Corrosian and I were working together. And she threatened to go to the police. I spent 13 years in prison for it. But the time wasn't wasted. I used those years for thought and planning to work out this entire operation in detail. So there was not one mastermind. There were two. <laughs> like Siamese twins. Without Corrosian, the plan couldn't have been carried out. But without me, there would have been no plan at all. And therefore, no ten million to be shared between us. A eh, Corinthian? Quite so, my dear Molly. Thirteen years, Miss Julietta. But at the end of them, five million. Well enough worth it, don't you think? I regret to tell you that I have something of a disappointment for you, my friend. Disappointment? Corinthian! Be quiet, Julietta. And as for you, Molly, stand quite still. What? What is all this? Why the gun, Corinthian? I am afraid that ten million pounds seems too satisfactory a sum to divide. Corrosion, you... you can't. Not after all these years. Listen to the next blast from that tug, my dear Arthur. It will be the last sound you hear. No, Corrosion, no! Ah. You will realize now, Julietta, why I told you nothing about Morley. I had a plan of my own. Ah. They're preparing to pull up the gang, I see. Corrosion, on the wharf, those cars. Police! Hold that gangway, get the spotlights on them. You, all of you, follow me. It's West. There he is. Corrosion, throw that gun down, it's all over. Over for you too, West. No, no. Juliet, let go of my arm. Let... Ah. Juliet. I'll have that gun, Corrosion. <coughs> You're finished, Corrosion. I've got you at last. Sergeant Gill, get the handcuffs on him. I'll take a look at the girl. Julietta. I... No, no. I... No, don't try to talk. I wish I knew why I could not let him kill you, Roger. Where... Let's see now. Eggs and bacon on. Kettle on. Uh, what else? What else? Ah, toast. You stay right where... Mm. Oh, Roger, it's only you. <laughs> Morning, oh. Jan. What do you mean, only me? Well, I, I heard noises from the kitchen. I thought I might have forgotten to lock the back door again. Is and... that what what the umbrella's for? Hmm. Well, not much good if I'd have been a burglar, my girl. Well, I, I just snatched up the first thing I could find. <laughs> How long have you been home? Oh, about 20 minutes. I thought you'd still be in bed. Well, that's where you should be instead of getting your own breakfast. You must be dropping. No, as a matter of fact, I feel fine. It's all over, Jan. Over? Mm hmm. All the kidnapped victims are free. And Chapworth's put out orders to watch all ports, railway stations, and air terminals. At least all the loot the villains have raided from London won't get out of the country. Oh, and what about Corrosion? Mm. Safely behind bars at the moment. And. Uh, you helped put him there, Janet Gunn. I did? Yes, yeah, something you said on the phone made me cotton on to Arthur Morley. A funny thing. You remember the day we saw him outside St. Catherine's at his daughter's wedding? Mm -hmm. If I'd have known then, he was Corrosian's partner. His partner? Mm -hmm. And he died for it. Uh, Julietta's dead, too. She got the bullet meant for me. Oh, oh Roger. She saved my life. Now, suppose you do likewise, Mrs. West. 
Here, take over. You make the toast. You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the final part of Battle for Inspector West by John Creasy. Battle for Inspector West was produced for the BBC by John Fawcett Wilson.